Oh, this your boy, Anarchy. Oh, is that baby waking up? This is your boy, Anarchy, coming at you with Church MHA Season 5, Episode 5. Hi! Uh, MHA Chapter 4, 15, and 4, 16. Love reaction did not do 4, 15 last week because I was informed that the... Um, Specifically that it was a roughly 11 or 10 page chapter. Figured we could stockpile it and uh, let it kind of do its own thing or be a part of the stream. That way we have a more thorough conversation to be had, uh, less likely to, you know, just end up being less than an hour or something like that. So we've had episodes like that before. You to be in the brain when we line up with. There's a little baby. Oh, let me get a blanket. Can you give me that blanket? We don't have a, the baby out here just in her diaper. Hi. Hi, little baby. That's my precious daughter. Yeah. Okay. First off, we got the Misutsune blanket. What's it got me for my wife? Come here. Come here. Can't have Jeannie just naked on camera. That's not acceptable. <laughs> Only your forehead is in the shot. So. All right, little baby. So, but yeah, uh, glad everybody's here. Let's see. So let's see that. Trying to get everything adjusted. Let's see. What the hell? What the hell? But I also want to take this time um, to talk about. Uh, the tragedy that happened earlier this week in the manga community with Akira Toriyama's passing. Um, obviously, I was going to sit around and make uh, a special video for it, just a reaction farm, because that's not like the kind of channel I'm trying to have here. Um, but I did want to say that uh, not only did that obviously influence a lot of anime, manga, but I think it's it's a huge component to many of our lives. Uh, many of us grew up, uh, just as an example of some of the memories I'd like to share involving the impact that Kira Toriyama had on my childhood. I um, remember playing the Budokai games. Um, my childhood, like where I lived between ages of three and eight, was a house that my great-grandma owned. And so my stepdad did a, we, we had like in our backyard spray painted on like a, a Goku that was the size of a picket fence, uh, along with some Dragon Balls. I think Vegeta was on there. Um, just a, a whole custom paint job. In addition that I remember even the simplest ways of, you know, trying to have fun is that we had these like rubber balls that are like this big. And so my brother and I would throw them at each other to like throw them at like each ball at the other uh specifically to get them to clash because they were blue and pink so it was like the kamehameha and the gallic gun clashing during the saiyan saga um when we were playing those budokai games where when budokai 3 dropped my brother and i would sometimes just sit in training mode with two characters and just practice and spam beam struggles at each other just to throw like uh, final shines and Kamehameha time 10 and all that other stuff uh, so really and even most recently um, my buddies I think I've mentioned this before my buddy Dom and I we used to every Saturday with Dragon Ball Super Resorting in which while that isn't necessarily written by Toriyama it's the result of his IP um, we used to eat chicken wings and watch Dragon Ball Super every Saturday when a new episode drop. Uh, 
we went to see the Cell Max movie in theaters just this past year while my wife was pregnant with the gene being she fell asleep during the theaters because pregnancy is hard but you know we went hi oh you need a big hug you said that nope big hug big hug for the baby but yeah so we've done a lot clear toriyama's kind of been was kind of one of the brightest spots and an abusive childhood of mine. So I want to thank him for his contributions. In fact, the first manga volume I ever owned was actually specifically volume nine of Dragon Ball, which is the conclusion of the fight with Goku and Jackie Chun. And uh, where he gets to a Red Ribbon Army base. Oh, yeah. As I smoked that fire pointed out, if you guys remember the episode where Goku skated on Catholic energy blast. So there was a day when we were at the bar, me, him, and some of our other friends. And every time one of us cracked a joke, uh, roasting each other, we would actually do the Goku's ah, like sort of like it, I think we're in our ooh, what were we, 24, 25? Uh, so yeah, just at the bar, just ah, because you know, this is five, six years ago now. But every time somebody got lit up, they got hit with the command man to the face. So it's just throughout every phase of my life, Akira Toriyama's work has been with me. And as Tanisha pointed out in the chat, the DNA of his work will continue to live on in future manga for the next however many years. And even then, we'll always find a way to uh, see what's derivative of what has been pioneered by that man. So I just want to say thank you, Akira Toriyama, for the work that you have done. And I hope that at the very least, before you were gone, you got to understand the positivity and the influence that you had in people's lives. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hop over to these chapters now. But I just wanted to give that... Uh, those flowers and those props where it's due. Because there'd be no Church of MHA without a curatory on this word. And that's just real. So let me hop on that last chapter now. So we're on chapter 415. Whoa. Suyu Asui jump scare. <laughs> All right. So we get back to the, the USJ arc. And this chapter is titled Rejection. High five. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. The resonance between my brother's factor and one for all was already building at a rapid pace. How is it I can see them now? No, no, no. You keep your boy, gotta keep your blanket on, baby. Can't just be a naked baby. Okay. Yeah. The resonance between my brother's factor and one for all was already building at a rapid pace. How? How is it I can see them now? And now, after a leader's transfer attack, that resonance has reached a critical point. <laughs> In order to claim one for all as his own, my brother sought its soul. Despite all the absurd power he amassed, that soul resides right here. We now face the mightiest villain with armor forged from untold malice and hatred. Putting it a stop to such a heinous calamity was always the very reason we've been woven into this chain of power. We are here now. All right, so... Just the getting the first user's perspective as we get these flashbacks. When all I can do is good job, YouTube. Let's see. As we see Deku moving forward with the black whip tendril sticking out of his back to wound that pride of yours of the symbol of peace. And of course, we see the no move, which drawn at Lovecraftian and horror style, because of course we have to change the angles and all this other stuff with Deku being the, which I, what I like about this is that you have Deku layered here with uh, what's his name? I don't know why his name is escaping me right now. 
He was loud, cloud. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, but you have Deku, who was weaker and more vulnerable at the time, and then he's the one with Shigaraki standing behind him. You got the the black mask over his face, even. <laughs> oh, Kurigiri, there we go. I, was, I don't know why his name is like fall, uh, falling away from me. Shigaraki Midoriya. All right, so let's see who's who's getting sent this time. See, in this smash right here that landed is reminiscent of the one that uh, Midoriya hit him with during PLW mid-flight. Let's see. We got All Might's Vestige. We got N. So I think N's the one who's going now. Uh, the transfer of One for All got bounced back. It did damage, though. The scumbag rejected us. Should have known this might happen, considering his will was strong enough to steal one, one of us away. Only the sixth end got through, and just barely. We have him to thank for that latest damage. <laughs> Meaning he couldn't completely shut himself away. If only those growing hands and fingers could receive the transfer. But no, this attempt only went through the moment I broke past the fingers and struck his chest. Transferring through the fingers won't work. They're like dead nails or layers of grime. Okay, so it's a good way to explain the extra body parts. They're effectively vestigial, or you could say they're not real. Where are you trying to go? You trying to go somewhere? Yes. This is my loving daughter. Do 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 do. It's a love baby. Um, Let's see. But we're getting the flashback to right after Tenko left with all for one, it looks like. We're getting there. We'll try again as many times as it takes. We'll see Shigaraki forming into quite the handsy figure. Ooh. Super duper long range remote control is made possible thanks to satellite uplinks. UA boasts peak performance even when it's on the fritz. Okay, so we're, we're back to hovering a little. Actually, no, that looks like there might still be a little elasticity. That particular baby informed Midoriya that his gauntlets were finished. It had a crash landing of its own. It needed to be, let's see. Yeah, I need to replace my glasses finally. This is getting ridiculous. It had a crash landing of its own, so I retooled it to be sturdier than ever. Allow me to assist. What you talk about? You want to see? You talking to mama? You talking to mommy? Oh, you playing? You hiding? Where did Teeny go? Mwah. This little baby's one. Say jump if you feel a froggy mommy. Lamiosis. Help the injured. Let me know if anyone can't walk on their own. Let's see. All right. So. All right. All right. He's a valued client of mine, you know, so if I want to provide excellent service in the days to come, I'd better observe him. That's the same boy who got my beloved thrown in the slammer, which somehow only helped my sweetheart to be even more amazingly wonderful. Stupendous. Shame on those who don't pitch in. You want to go hang out with mommy? Okay, you can hang out with mommy. Yeah. Let's see. Most anime, bro. All right, let me let me look at this real quick. Let me look at the chat real quick. Just gonna get towards the end. So, 
I once saw someone say that Horikoshi is phoning it in, especially with these two chapters. I can't imagine how anyone can say that. I know Rutley really burns for school. JSL signed this special like stream. The DV, yep. Okay. All right. Caught up on live chat. Shame on those who don't pitch in, and we still have the business students filming. Well, evacuation shelter. Whoa, what is that? A giant clump of hands? Ah, not so fast. Ectoplasm. Wait, Aerie. And Aerie's horn has grown back. It's been a month. So we're going to... Holy shit, this first page is raw. 416. Wrench it open. Izuku Midoriya. See, this... The, this you wouldn't know he's a hero thing is getting taken to its extreme here. The black whip claws just bruh. Wrench it open, Izuku Midoriya. So as he's charging at him, we see that huge thing of hands. Not so fast. But I gotta help Deku. Hundreds of kilometers lie between us, him and us. I can ride back in the big box the same way we got here. This battle against Dabi Makia and All for One were far more destructive than anticipated, damaging even our evacuation system. A, a return trip is not possible. Besides, your re rewind energy is not yet replenished. Rushing to him now would be fruitless. You know this much after meeting with Eraser. Oh my goodness. Eraserhead. Looking at the little girl and saying, me, I got run over by a duck truck, but don't worry, I'm on the mend. He would never tell her that Shigifo tried to use a bullet made from her powers to take his quirk away. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Amazing. Perfect. I understand painfully well how you must feel, but all we can do for now is keep the faith. You've got a dream of your own, Aerie. Let's see. She was, okay. That makes me want to try hard, extra hard myself. You know Midoriya is always about to burst out crying. Oh, Kota. I'm kind of a crybaby, just like him. And when I see him fighting so hard, it makes me feel like I got to take action too. Say you get to rest here, man. All right, so we got everybody having to think about their roles and interactions with Midoriya. Say you get to rest here for now. Will we get to go back to our old lives eventually? Whoo! This shot is crazy. The flip with the black whips. This shit's lit. Everyone is in this together with me. So, yes. We'll bring it all back. All right. Let's see. We're at the landing site. Monoma, hang in there. And we see that Yayorozu can see the has a phone that's able to like see what's going on. Midoriya has once more adopted that dark form of his. And we got Kaminari looking exhausted, looking at the image. I can't tell if that's supposed I guess that's just supposed to be Deku, but it also looks like it, that right here. It looks like it could have been a Kirishima. It's wild. He shots uh, Mamoya. In the comics and stuff, they got characters who would be like, I believe in my pal, total faith. Usually it's somebody on the sidelines who'd be shouting that, like me or Kirishima. Momo response, I'm sorry to say I haven't consumed those particular works of fiction. Not much of a shonen reader, right? Well, Midoriya is probably like the strongest guy in the world now. So why don't I feel like everything's going to turn out A-OK? -okay, the way All Might used to inspire everyone. Momo Yao, does me being all anxious and worried mean I don't got faith in him? Oh, man. 
Oh man, that oh that uh that kind of hurt because I think the saddest part of that isn't that he's using manga as a reference, but it's the fact that he doesn't understand that he's seen Deku be vulnerable. He's seen Deku's humanity. He's seen him be tired. He's seen him be exhausted. He's seen him need to rest. And he, he knows Deku's human. The disconnect between Deku and All Might here is that when you look at the UA Sports Festival, for example, everyone has seen Deku break in some form or fashion. They've seen Deku lose before. So even with Deku being the most powerful person in the world, people cannot shake that fact from their minds which means even if he ends up not losing all of his powers and all this other stuff there is a cognitive you know like reason to remember that Deku is a human and that complacency that was born of all might is just so much less likely to be formed Because they got to see that vulnerable side of him, that weaker side. Yeah, because we got a girl who's in seriously bad shape. So we're back at the the villa where Toga and them were. Yeah, because we got a girl who's in seriously bad shape. Uh, a rabbity something or other. I forgot her name. That girl from UA. Anyway, the chopper will get her there soon. UA robots are on their way. That garbage girl might not pull through. We got a live feed of Midoriya. It's looking crazy. Forget that. Focus on these folks. See, okay, so the reporter is the one who... That's not exactly a, an evac helicopter, but we'll take it. Um, Uravity. Right, the one who in, looks like... Tokoyami, for the most part, is alive. I guess this is confirmation that Tokoyami doesn't have any like bird wings or small vestigial feathers on his back or anything like that. Just random thing. If all of us, if all of us are even a little capable of seeing each other united as one. All right, so I'm going to be honest with you. This sequence, like this chapter specifically, I I need them to go so hard in the anime with this. Genie the Beanie, what you doing? Are you looking for your mama? So Because the way that they can intercut the stuff happening on the screen that all these people are watching, all these crazy shots of Deku versus Shigaraki with the stuff that people are experiencing is going to be nuts. It has some of the highest hype, whatever you want to call it, potential out of anything. Oh. Yep, you found mommy. Just zooming along. Huh? All right, we cut over to Nagant and Lock Rock. Why did I follow after Midoriya? Lady Nagant, former hero slash villain. He managed to wrench open my heart. He has a special way of doing it, and there's nothing harder for a villain to bear than that. Oh, you went to the wrong room. You guessed the wrong location for mommy. Crawling back in here. Say crawling in my skin. Yeah, it's a little baby.
I mean, sure, beating villains is all about making them lose the will to keep fighting. I bet that's what he's up to right now. He's not merely out to punish evil, like it's also black and white. That boy's dream is taking him down a thornier, more nuanced path. And that look on his face when he's up against the villain or the wall and running himself ragged, it makes you want to risk it all to back him up. See, Deku. See, the crybaby hero. There it is. The tears. As he fights for not only his life, but the lives of everyone else. Oh, my God. Jamie, this was peak page work. It's cinema. It rhymes. Jeannie the Beanie, you don't understand yet. I cannot wait to have this in paper form. Look, look. No, she's not walking. She's she's crawling everywhere. Hold on, let me get the, the invite link out to the to the folks real quick. Don't worry, yours is coming. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Zoom, you're so fu you're so funny. Okay. You know, I just realized that I was so busy geeking over the page, and you guys knew what I was geeking about because you already read the chapter, but I didn't actually say what was on the chapter. <laughs> Shigaraki is yelling, get the hell away from me. And you just see Deku's fist just coming in, just ah. And boom. We get the picture of the house. The destruction of everything stemming from that house. And of course, the flashback is a stop Tenko with Shigaraki being forced to Think about how, like, as he's putting his hands out to try to stop Deku. Man. The PTSD is real. Oh, man. Horikoshi was cooking. Horikoshi was cooking. Let me say this again. Someone has cooked here. Because th th look, because uh, I'm gonna be real with you here. We got to be real. Uh, let me be clear. These pages are peak cinema. They're what we look forward to. Uh, it would be in our best interest if on this day we would take a moment and celebrate the glory that is the page structure of this My Hero Academia chapter. I put forth that not only do we celebrate it, but going forward, March 10th is best MHA page day layout ever today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I said that was off one, but I guess it could have been technically the guy who brought him home. But the the biggest thing with uh... Oh, it's clearly that the decay theory is, you know, confirmed. So, my personal stance on that is I feel like because I'm not exactly the biggest fan of Shigaraki being gifted decay, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. uh, 
which on, at this point I'm just going to pull up the whole that that chapter. And the main hello, hello the, everyone. That, what up, Thomas? And what up, Joseph? I'm, I'm guessing you're getting some mic stuff done. Um, the main thing that makes me not the biggest fan of that uh, theory is primarily the fact that I'm pretty sure he had allergies before he met him. Yes, not... he was itching. So, let me see. Yeah. So it kind of goes against the theory. Unless, like, Tenko met him before, but with this chapter, it should be implied that, yeah, that was the first time they both met each other. Yeah. Well, let's see. Because, like, yeah, the, the start of the flashback is him being brought home, actually. So let's see. Hello, everyone. Hello. But, okay, so the start of the flashback is him being brought home, but he already had the allergy-ridden eyes. Yes. So it wouldn't make sense for them to already have the cream and stuff and be trying to... this. And this is talked about as an ongoing issue. So, yeah, no. Uh, Antenko already believes that it's the house. So unless there was supposed to be a large gap in time shown, that wasn't. Then, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it doesn't explain it. Still? Yeah. And, and I'd rather, what I'd rather it be is that Let's be serious for a second. Aoyama was given naval. What you questioning? <laughs> Aoyama was given naval laser specifically uh, with the fact that, like we we know Aoyama was given naval laser because it's a trash quirk, right? Like we all know that awful one was like, yeah, I'll give you a quirk. <laughs> Fuck this one. Uh, <laughs> Like, I don't think any of us have any delusions about him, like, you know, like, oh, this is a peak quirk. This kid will love it. It'll make his life better. He was like, nah, bro, this quirk makes you shit your pants. Take this. I like to believe he had it for a while, and he was just looking for the right, you know, opportunity yeah. to pass on, because yeah. he can't it, it, stand always going to the bathroom. No, I mean, it's a bargain. Like, quirks are bargaining tools for our awful one. Like, that. that's why, like, he, he uh, gave a literally a crappy quirk away just because it would put him on it would put the entire Aoyama family under his thumb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's like, it's not like he so in this case why would he give away Decay? Like, I can't think of a reason for him to give Decay away. It's like any other quirk could still, if like, let's just say all for one was planning for Tenko to kill his family, any other quirk could have done that and not be as good as the K. Like, the K is a fantastic quirk. I don't think he would ever, like, hand that over until it was time for him to inherit all for one. Because, like... It, 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 yeah, it's just one of those things that I'm like, I don't think this actually makes too much sense to want mm -hmm. to, but that's okay. Uh, no, no, I was just laughing at something that Tanisha Greer said in the chat. It's like, uh, Horikoshi was pretty much going for the last goddamn time. Eri is not a DOS Deus Ex yes. Machina. She is a I, child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my thing is, is that I, I, I do like that this chapter opened with once again, I am telling you, Everything you worry about me doing with Ari is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. She is not the seven Dragon Balls. She is a child. Which, I mean, what I like about it, though, like, what what the Ari thing was designed to do is show how Deku is to remind people that one of Deku's greatest skills is inspiring others to act. Mm -hmm. And we had Toda just straight up say it, like, yeah, when I see him do stuff, it makes me want to move forward. Um, I love, in the uh, in the scans, um, Koda said, big bro Midoriya, and I've always had, like, the Konohamaru vibes mm -hmm. from him, 
which makes it even more cuter. Um, oh shit! Oh my god! Oh, I didn't know we were going to have a goat in the building. No, no, no! You're you're not talking about me now, are you? <laughs> I think I am. Hey, on this. <laughs> What up, Alvis? How you doing? Not bad, not bad. I'm dead and luck cooked. My hero is kind of cooking. I've been anticipating this a lot, pretty much since the start of the third act. So I'm excited. Also, I just want to say that if you're not on the Undead Unluck wave, get on it. Because Undead Unluck has been cooking for over, I want to say, two years straight now. Cough, cough, Joseph. Uh, what? Mm. Whoa. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, but I converted Thomas. I converted Jorno. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but if, yeah. um, so, Alves, obviously, there's something that really spoke to you that made you want to come on this weekend. So, uh, I want to hear what was it that inspired you? Well, I wouldn't say it was. I didn't. I don't even read scans. I, I was actually a chapter behind until today. I. Uh, I... Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's four fifteen and four sixteen uh, back to back today. Uh, you can hear me just fine, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you're coming through clean. Okay. Haven't used Zoom in a while. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Um, like I said, this conflict with Deku, Deku and Shigaraki, I've been anticipating it since the end, like the whole vestige thing at the end of Act Two and whatnot. I've been very curious as to what solution Deku was going to use. I really, really like the use of one for all and the quirk factors, attacking him with it and whatnot, allowing certain parts of the quirk factor, you know, Black Whip, the second user's gear shift, um, Nana's float, uh, Danger Sense. I'm very curious. Like, that's the thing. Is like, I have no idea what exactly is going to happen by the end here. And that's what's compelling me. I'm like, something's going to happen. And I just know he's going to cook. I just know he's going to cook. Mm hmm Elvis! Oh my god, it's Elvis! <laughs> oh no, Coyote! <laughs> hey, Coyote? No, don't talk to me. This is Elvis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, typical Coyote and Thomas interaction. Oh my god, excited. I got bitch slapped. That's crazy. Excited for me? You're always excited. You're such a <laughs> simp. Okay. But uh, Alves, when you said that um, something may change, I think the whole like uh, Kaminari doubting Deku, doubting how he feels about his classmate, I feel like that is like the big sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was a little unexpected to see him in Momo. That spread with Deku and like the whole crowd just like they start to mutter like you can do it. Like you can tell mm -hmm. that's going to rise into like some sort of chance. Like they're going to chant like it was All Might and Kamino. Sooner. Yeah, this is some this is some great stuff. Uh, we're finally touching back on MVA. I'm a, I'm, I was a bit mixed on Deku, like Shigaraki's personality being subdued for so much of Act Three, but you know now we're finally getting back to the actual Shigaraki as a character. So I'm glad. Yeah, and Deku. Oh my god, the art on Deku. Oh god. I think we always knew that it was going to at least somewhat be an ideological battle. Yes. Like, we knew that it was going to have to come down. And I think we've been discussing, at least on the stream, I think we've been discussing the vestige battle or the battle that would have to take place within the vestige world for a while. This is different than how we always talked about it because we always know, you know, we speculate, but we don't always have the exact answer outside of the time that I said that Spinner was going to cut off specifically Shoji's arms in the battle <laughs> during the racism arc. But Shoji Spinner, hey, what you doing over here? Yeah, to me, it kind of always felt like a lot of people are complaining now, especially with how the My Hero fight for Shigaraki is going. But I kind of always felt like it was going to be like this. I always thought it was going to be a yap session and a lot of emotional moments over straight hands. Gotta love some talk no jutsu. Well, I don't know why that... people expected straight hands when we don't really see straight hands from Horikoshi in most fights. Yeah, like because the, the fights the are storytelling story tools. Like they're, they're not meant to be like spectacles. They're the fights 
are used to propel the plot forward. Yeah. Did we notice the backflip page? What backflip page? Oh, it's uh, Deku cleaving right through the finger, which is so cool. The way uh, Hori drew the eyes, too, is very Spider-Man-like. I'm trying to find this page. Oh, uh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, that was very clean. This is my first time seeing the chapter since the leaks. So I haven't seen every panel beautifully like that. And that one I noticed, yeah. Like, it looks sick. I'm gonna keep it above. They better not lock up Lady Nagon after all this shit she's doing, man. If Uncle Ooh. Iroh can escape prison sentences, Lady Nagant can escape hers, too. If if Lady Nagant gets locked up, I just I first off I just can't see it happening. If I'm honest, I can't. Main reason I can't see it happening is just I feel like Deku's goal is to make the world better, and locking up somebody for killing a corrupt politician. I would say she served her time anyway. Mm-hmm. What's more, um. Yeah, we'll that has, time served. <laughs> like, like gentle has done a whole lot. Oh, yeah, gentle is like so. We might get a hero license after this. Mm-hmm. Imprisoning these people after their efforts just seems not to be the move, and like it will not do or create anything good for hero society as a whole. Because the other thing that people need to do is learn how to get over shit. So putting those two back in prison would kind of contradict that. So Mm -hmm. they kind of have to push past it. You're a little baby. Give me five. No, these two chapters together, like they feel like they could be like a season premiere episode because it's sort of catching everyone up where everyone else is and what <laughs> what had happened to them and what they're going through. Um, like I don't think uh season seven will extend this far, but it just kind of gave me that vibe. They uh they dropped a new PV for season seven. I did um, see that. Yeah, we could kind of tell. How far we're going? Um, it's not. We haven't even seen Deku versus Shigafo, so it's really exciting. But I think like this chapter, I've seen a lot of people angry that it's it's more of a it's not action packed chapter, but it's more of a yeah. Here's where Iraq is. Here's like how everyone feels about Deku. Yeah. Um, kind of building him up to this all my figure because like seeing the crowd say do your best. Like, I think it was Alves who said it, that, like, we're going to get that chance. We're going to see people cheer him yeah. on. It's yeah, kind of a spirit bomb moment. Yeah, and, it like, chapters bad. like this is important for that type um, yeah. of outcome with this uh, with this manga. Because I, I feel like we're not ending this conflict between Deku and Shigaraki solely in the vested world. It's going to extend past that. And we're going to see Deku's, like, quote-unquote final smash. Um, his United States of Smash moment. United Japanese provinces of Smash. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not against like this type of yap chapter. I'm all for it. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, it's like you said. Like, it's the spirit bomb moment. Like, it is like. Like, we're bringing a lot of threads together throughout the story, like with the reporters, Ochako being brought in. Interesting that he doesn't show Toga there. I am mm. rather of the belief that she's probably dead. And I think that's Dobby next to Uraraka, right? No, that's another hero. Uh, he was shown at the very beginning of this arc. He um, Let me try to find a chapter. But it's like really surprising how he chose him out of everyone to put right next to Uraraka. It like really shows how... You know what page and I can if, probably recognize the most random person. Um, it was right next to Uraraka on the plane. Page nine, yeah, on page yeah. nine, page. next to the reporter and Sue. Mm-hmm. Sue and the reporter. underneath Sue, you looking up at the helicopter. Isn't that tiger? Uh, no, no, the hair's tiger is a lot bigger. Oh wait, but it's gonna be Mad Dog, maybe. Oh, in the helicopter. So. 
yeah, yeah, they're in the it, shelf. The it's shelf. just the left arm, like um, that's reminiscent of. Let me actually find. Um, Damn, Thomas is gonna recognize somebody just by their titties. Of course, <laughs> that's. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's why he's. That's why he's the goat. You're not wrong, I guess. <laughs> I'll find it one while we're talking. Just give me a bit. I'm trying to see if I can. Was that a fork? Oh, that was, yeah, yeah. Fork, fork. Yeah, Tyler. Tyler mentioning okay. all hands and no substance. That's what certain other series are looking for. And that's Can sometimes all some other series need to be. Yeah. yeah. Everyone got their own strokes of what they like, and I can firmly say I am a meathead. And I enjoy those types of series. Mm -hmm. Very real fun. Oh. That being said, we are shy Guys, yeah, that one was Freelo. Freelo? What? It's Freelo. That's Comedy Woods. Is it? Is is it? it? Isn't, isn't his hair leaves, though? Yeah, his hair is leaves. Yeah. I mean, look at his arm. I Tell mean, me that's not the wood arm. Yeah, I mean... But it looks like his shit. Could that be a shirt? Is, is his skin not made of wood? I mean, no, his arms I'm... have that wood gauntlet on, but uh, but, but yeah. I don't think that's maybe it is. I don't know. That at least that's that's the closest person I can think of with that body type. Because it wouldn't be Dobby because it, it would be more cooked. He's burnt. Know, Tyler he... says it's the person shown when the Toga Twice clones were attacking. Okay, Use your base, Thomas. That would make sense in the area. Oh, oh, I found it. I found it. I found uh I found the guy. Screenshot for me. He says Yout. My daughter hot. stole my headset, so uh You're fine. I can't hear you. One second. Says a headset. One second. Um screenshot for me. I think boy. it's 360 uh 376. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Look at that. Tyler knows him based off titties compared to you. I can't fucking believe this, Thomas. You're a fraud to me. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You're just a fraud. <laughs> it's a fraud gooner. <laughs> Are you not going to send me the screenshot? What the fuck, Thomas? This score's not working. It's... Oh my god, Thomas. I'm sorry. Um, Where's your DMs? I'll put it into Bishop chat. Uh, I don't care where you do it. Just send it to me. Fuck. <laughs> I'm sending oh, it to there. I'm, I'm seeing the guy. I'm seeing the guy. There you go. I mean, shit. Good shit on Tyler well, for remembering this dude. Because I wouldn't have remembered where he was. Yeah, he might be one of... What's his name? Mad Dog's like a... Uh... Like sidekicks or something. Who the fuck is Mad Dog? God damn! Like, I gotta Google some people. Do they mean Hound Dog? The uh, oh. the. Oh, dog so. oh, Hound! I'm not gonna lie. I thought Tyler or not Tyler. Uh, Alvis was pulling some ancient knowledge that not even I knew, man. I thought yeah, I was no, slacking the... on my game. Oh shit! Sorry. Yeah, Coyote. I I uh, added you in the Discord with it. I think I saw him. Oh, um, Shishido. Oh, okay, the, the, the lion guy. Okay, all right. Yeah, the feral hero. Yeah, the lion hero. A, a uh, recycle from uh, Horikoshi's first series. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, Shishido and Gainorka, they were originally in the uh th that zoo series that Horikoshi did I think two thousand seven. Has anyone that... actually read that series? I have not I'd be I'd be interested too if it was on like Viz or Shonen Jump, but I haven't I haven't seen it. So I was gonna say, send me that link, man. I'd be down to do a read through in the church, man. I wanna say it is on Viz. Is it? Uh, maybe I'm spelling the name wrong then. Because <laughs> I know, like, the title translates to Crazy Zoo, but I just don't remember how the, uh, how it's spelled out, like, when, uh, 
I'm pretty sure that other series, the sci-fi one is. Uh, yeah, Barrage, Barrage is, and I I have read that. Which one's Barrage? Barrage uh, is that... the one before this series. Actually, it might be the one even before. No, I think it's after the zoo, but before this one. And it's yeah. the one that takes place and uses the power of darkness and has, like, the basis. Like, if you look at the main character, he looks like another version of Deku. And his sensei is very reminiscent of Aizawa and is bad with yeah, women. Yeah, Tiamat. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no. the Tiamat. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's it, no, it, it's literally a Prince and the Pauper in space. Apparently, Umagad, however the fuck you say that, Umagad Zoo is on Viz. Of course, you know, you fucking weeb. <laughs> okay. Oh, it is on Viz. Okay, I'll have to go ahead and check that out. Mm hmm. I thought so. I thought I saw it. Thomas, quick question. Hmm? I, I was reading, apparently Giorno spent $40 on a Red Lobster tip when East was. Are you going to do the same uh -huh. for me? When I come uh, visit, no. I mean, that $40 tip. I mean, sure, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I'll drop money. You're going to drop 20 um, No, I'll drop money. How much? Wouldn't you want to know, what a boy? <laughs> Not on me, on the waitress. We're trying to make people rich today. Well, are Mr. Beast here? Yeah. I guess so. Um, I'm looking at this chapter, and I'm looking at, like, the crowds in the shelter. It's, like, sick seeing all the, um, the mutants, because it's been established that a lot of these um, shelters just, you know, just outright saying no to them. The mutants yeah. are still on the streets after this war would be fucking. You know insane. our heroes can't be racist. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Shoto. You're right. There's exceptions, <laughs> I guess. But also, like, I, I feel like, especially if you have Deku calling you out and fighting for people, and then you have, you know, uh, Ipan Jose mm -hmm. being like. That guy saves me from those rednecks. It's hard to be like, <laughs> I'm so justified in being an asshole to these people. It's like you're not. Mm -hmm. Listen, man, even if Deku was my number one hero and I was in the same country, I'd still be an asshole just to be an asshole, man. There's Ooh. no amount of good stuff someone can do to make me change my ways, man. Yeah, but that's because you're boosted. <laughs> <laughs> It's just sometimes the all endeavor should have stood on business. I think about it. This is kind of Deku. Like we see the guy that ridicules him at the end of Deku Black, like you know, telling saying he should leave and whatnot. He's kind of pulling like the endeavor, like just watch me. Like he's mm -hmm. just speaking through his actions. He's showing the people what they're fighting for. And I am curious how much of this, like the people, like watching Japan yeah. over the world, they're going to take away from how Shigaraki got to this point of just hating everything. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Deku's gonna tell some of Shigaraki's, like, story in the press media yeah. about how he yeah. wasn't all that bad. Well, obviously he was but, well, bad, but, like, how he got to What happened point. to him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People not helping him. People, like, all for one just being able to run amok. Ew. Yeah. I remember, um, I think it was Volk who... Said that like since they're having like the shared memories thing, uh, like as they're doing the transfer, that's how Deku knows what Shigaraki was doing, like all the times to cut away. So, yeah. it, and since Deku is telling the story, that could be how that how their story gets out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, true. That is true. Okay. Uh, I'm getting inspired because of Deku's fucking insanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't believe someone crying inspires them. Can't Crazy. be my goat. It is my goat. I um I enjoy seeing um or enjoy the fact that we're going back to that house. Yeah, yeah. 
um, I'm just wondering how long we're going to spend there or if that's going to be just a... How long would y'all want to spend there? Is the I question. think we get at least a half chapter there. Yeah. yeah. And the reason for that is because I think Deku at least needs, gets to see him getting his ass whooped mm-hmm. as a kid and some of that other stuff. Do we think he needs to see like uh, what his dad kind of like... The same thing with uh, how his dad was abandoned as a child because of heroes do you think he kind of needs to see that as well along with shigaraki's thing yes or do you think that'd be impossible because it's not sure well well it'd be I just do. seeing shigaraki culture knows. talk about us yeah mm. yeah okay. because be seeing think... maybe just another uh version of like him dragging him from the door outside and have culture be like talking about like not abandoning him or you can't play heroes Oh, and yeah, that's how like Deku puts two and two together. Specifically, I think you need to see. We have to see Deku seeing him see the picture of Nana. Yes. And what that impact was on him. Yeah. Because what I think happens there is that he sees that, and Nana's like, "Put me in, coach." <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And like, is that risky? Sure, but he can mm-hmm. use Black Whip to. Doc Ock himself into the air yeah. and Air Force and other stuff to stay flo- uh, flying. And Shigaraki's way more focused on defense at this point because yes. his whole personality is being, like, his inside BD organ is being touched by all these weird moments that he's sharing with this kid that he mm-hmm. threatened to kill him all once. He's probably regretting not dusting his ass right there. Uh, yeah. So I think Nana gets sent in there but inst- because he has the ability to reject them, instead of her actually being successful as a missile, instead what ends up happening is they end up like kind of like bouncing back and re- like creating a reverb, leading yes. to them getting to experience Nana's perspective on the past. And I think that mm-hmm. with Shigaraki still actively choosing to reject Deku here, um, there is still going to be bitterness in Shigaraki, and I think they still do fight. Yeah, but I think we reach a point where the internal scarring weakens Shigaraki enough that they can just like fight it out and get it done, mm-hmm. uh, and that's how we can move towards the 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 raw phase, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, super strength on super strength action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's less about which the fact that he tried to launch all five of them at once is insane. Yes, uh, I, I thought that was crazy. Six, like, <laughs> bro, what? You, you, he was like, you know, a six shooter has six bullets. <laughs> well, that means it six all shoots all six of them at once, right? And it's like, no, a revolver does not do that, Deku. That's not how it works. It was very funny how Kudo was like, Bonjo, stay there, stay with Deku. You're his last <laughs> life, life, and Deku's and like, Deku. fuck it, oh, why is all? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me, like. I am excited to see the um, like a revisit to Tenko finding the uh the photo because in a way that was his version of Deku seeing the video of All Might. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to see that. I I love seeing all these like old moments being redrawn, like when you see like Deku and Shigaraki charging each other. You see like yeah. the USJ like the Shigaraki shot, and then Deku going in for the punch. It's like it's sick. It's a great way of um, seeing all these like redrawn, but also have like Deku. Because like there's a difference between hearing about something and actually mm-hmm. experiencing what happened. Cause that lends to more empathy. Yeah. Also, I, I want to be. I, this is slightly tangential, mm-hmm. and by slightly tangential, I mean arguably very. Um, uh, like we do in in the streams. Yeah. I can't have Black Whip going, bro. Yeah, yeah, that... I, I, oh, yeah, I no, need... no, he absolutely needs to keep that, I, bro. The, the the fucking opening shot with the the gunk. Yeah, nah, bro. Don't take this demon mode stuff from us. Don't take it. Don't take it from us, Horikoshi. <laughs> Don't do that. I need it. I need Although, if Hori does take it away, we need to like just enjoy all these panels while we have them. I no. mean that's where I'm at, but I I, I don't want to, bro. I, I, want to I, I don't this. think I will enjoy them. I'd rather just keep black, but <laughs> mm. 
But oh, it's, a, it's it's either l- lose Black Whip and keep one for all, or lose all the quirks. You gotta choose one. I'd rather lose all the quirks. It's either mm. keep Black Whip or none of it. That's all it is for me. Damn, I... Man. I get a good ending either way, man. I'm still mm-hmm. all for the quirkless Deku ending, as well as the cop blocked Deku ending. I get mm-hmm. any ending, and I'm fine with it. Oh, you said it. You said it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. So that okay. So that's the other thing too is that the I need to double check this real quick. Yeah, because I need because Horikoshi can be consistent on that, but it doesn't mean he's going to be perfect on this. Back to chapter 236. I mean, the most likelihood is like Banjo passes on Black Whip stays, which I'm happy with. Yeah, bro. One thing I will say in 415, the spread where he launches them, like it looks like N, the smoke guy, is like yes. the most towards the left. And I'm feeling like he was the one that got launched there. And I'm wondering mm-hmm. if that might be the order of them. Like maybe Yoichi is the next one, which I guess Did would be. Did the leaker say that N was um, the only one that went? Yeah, it says N is the only one that goes. Yeah, no, the order would have been N, Bruce, Bonjo, uh, Yorichi, then Nana. I keep forgetting we're doing a double chapter, so I keep looking at 416, like, what the fuck yeah, is yeah. N in this chapter? <laughs> yeah, N was the one who got through. Of course, like, he's still floating and whatnot. Just, hmm. I wonder if that last punch in, four, in today's chapter, then... If that got anything through to him. The last punch? No, I don't think so. I think that yeah, was really just going in for an punch. punch animated. Okay, so this does conf- actually this chapter did confirm that the stranger was off the window. Mm-hmm. Because if you look closer, if you zoom in. Zoom into where? On page seven. I want you to zoom in. On the panel where he's bringing Shigaraki home, I want you to zoom in and look close to the center of the stranger's palms. You didn't even need to say I recognize those forearms anywhere. Pause. Play. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Do you see it? I gotta look at the hands, hold up. Like, it could just be weird shadowing, but I doubt it. Uh, I don't see it. Look like right I... where uh, Tomura's knuckles meet. Knuckles. And I'm looking for the hole in his hand? So, it actually looks better, slightly, like, if you're on the website, you zoom like once, but not twice, no. and you can kind of see it. So I'm looking on the website right now. But if you zoom in too close, then it just looks muddled, and that might just be the image quality dropping because it's so zoomed in. So I came back. Are you are you imply? Are you trying to say that like the transfer didn't happen there because not, he's grabbing onto the fingers? I don't think that he gave it to him. I still don't yeah. think that. I disagree. Sense. I 100 percent agree with you. I don't think but it. I do think that does confirm that it was off one. Mm-hmm. Bro, what you talking about? That could die for, bro. You you plotting on a, a who death. I smoked that fire? Even better, bro. Wait, we talking about I, I need fire? to give them their roses yeah. for that one. He's telling the story though. So. Yeah, he's telling it at his funeral. <laughs> the funeral Wait. would imply he's dead. It's an <laughs> audio message. An audio. <laughs> he recorded at his last like baited Brett. He just yeah. He was recording Brett. it as he was fighting Shigaraki, man. Damn, I didn't know he had enough time to like talk about like over <laughs> almost two years hey, of man. just content. He, he had time to yap during that fight. Okay. You know what's okay? So I'm looking at like when I look at four fifteen again though, it's so funny because it feels like Horikoshi was like, you know what people would hate. Let's mm-hmm. give him something to talk about. 
<laughs> and it was like, I'm just playing with you in this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, I'm not doing that to my story. Why did you think I would do that to my story? We have a question from Cameron Bailey. Hey, church, I need y'all opinion on this. Do you think this scene should be Midoriya alone or Midoriya and Nana? Because for me, I don't want the other vestiges there. I feel like they would ruin this. I think Nana has to eventually react. But I do think I want to see Deku go through this like this particular flashback by himself first. Mm -hmm. Because I want his conclusion or his opinion formed about the situation and then we can work with what other niggas think. Yes. But for the start of it, everybody else be quiet. Also, uh, my wife stood up and I just remembered that I sometimes watch Hoof Talk videos, Thomas. And the reason why I'm saying Thomas is because there's, I think this guy's name is like the Hoof GP or something like that. Mm -hmm. He does videos carving and trimming hooves. And every now and then while he's trimming a cow hoof, my wife will go, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I got the chance to do that as well. It's not fun. <sighs> You don't like hoof carving? Okay, so those knives they use on the hoof, the yeah, you gotta like push that, don't you? Wait, my mic. Sorry. Yeah, you have to like dig in. Because she was like, I feel like you need at least twenty pounds of force per flick to actually be peeling off this nail. Oh, we power scaling the the hooves. Yeah, like yeah. you gotta. Oh like... yeah, it, it's like carving um wood to make a spear. Okay, so yeah. I don't know if you heard that, dear, but Thomas said that it's like carving wood to make a spear or a spear when you carve hoofs. So, there we go. Are you secretly friends with the hoof GP? Possibly. <laughs> cow Cowboy Thomas? Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, I live man. on a farm, so I would have got this to. ukulele for Jeannie's birthday. Aww. <laughs> Adorable. It was sent by East. <laughs> of course. Play the Lady Jean. Of course, oh. he got her something that made a lot of noise. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> She's also got a, a steel tonal drum somewhere in here. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The musician arc, I see. <laughs> I heard mouths over here. So I'm looking in the, the server and Geo. Um, which is, you know, a beloved member of the church. We love asked, you. Asked, like, where is, uh, where is Toka? And she also said, I think this is this was the uh, perfect opportunity for someone to comment about her status, but didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. she's dead. She got put in a pet. And yeah, this I don't is my daughter's steel tone drum. Oh, look at that. And it goes like this. Mm. Play us a beat. <laughs> <laughs> Does she want to play it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Cameron. That where'd was you baby get the shark from? Where'd you get butter from, Cameron? Carolina. Where'd you get your your beef for your hamburgers? <laughs> for for your hamburgers. farms around. But um, I don't think we need to get confirmation on Toga or I where she is. I feel like that should have been last, to be honest, because mm -hmm. like I. I get like people want confirmation now, but I kind of feel like that's the end of the arc thing. Yeah, same mm -hmm. as Dottie, I think. Yeah, I feel like that conclusion was so good. There's no need like, for follow up. It speaks for itself. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't need any update until like we get like Uraka's thoughts about it or something. Yes, absolutely. Which we're hundred percent gonna get. Because um, like, for example, for twice, the only follow up we got was due to its weaponization. Yeah. But like we all knew he was dead. We were like oh he's dead. Mm -hmm. And like in this case I'm going to be real with you. If I were the good guys I would be on some pretty disrespectful shit. So yeah. like because you know I don't have especially if, like most of them don't have this extra context to humanize Toga. They just know she ran around stabbing people. Mm. So 
if I see her dead next to Ochako after looking like it, she maybe gave her a blood transfusion or something, I'm not thinking, oh boy, let me honor this girl and you know, put her in a thing. And I'm thinking, leave your ass here to rock. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's on his coyote arc. You... Like that, that's what you would think without all that context. Yeah. Now, Coyote thinking that with context just means it's a demon. But <laughs> <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> I've and... seen people talk about like, oh, maybe when Hawks is in the helicopter, he looks down and sees Toga. Why would that Toga was right next to Araka? These we theories see, are dog. They're if not. We see the heroes leaving her dead body, bleeding out. I would love it if they do that. Please show think, that. I don't think Hori's that cruel. I think Hori I do was... think he's cruel. But however, like Aniki said earlier in the stream, those are not rescue helicopters. Those are news uh, yeah. helicopters. So they're going to grab the heroes. Yeah, Ooh. the news Which... reporter's not going to take the fucking villain, bro. Which I just noticed. I think that's Giganto Maki in the background behind yes. Fox and, and Tokuyami. Because like yeah, the last time guy. we saw him, it looked like he was like becoming like a bleach skeleton, like, like Kenpachi or some <laughs> shit. So I'm curious, is he even alive? Is he? Uh, what is... I I believe last time we saw Giganto Maki was when all four oh, uh, one imp uh, impure, impure beam. Yeah, exactly. Impure yeah. Beam. He like sliced them and then hit Tog. Uh, I said Toga, <laughs> Fox and Tokuyami. <laughs> I have no idea if that dude's even alive. Yeah, I don't think he's alive. Maybe? maybe? Fuck, is dead. Because Fudge can send out... Well, okay, so... Not Fudge. Ectoplasm. Uh, Fudge is a top lane League of Legends player for Cloud9. <laughs> but... So, Ectoplasm, calling it just babysitting is a little... little teeny bit of a misrepresentation. I but mean, it's but it's, it's very big of a fact. <laughs> because due to his shadow clone jutsu, he is one mm -hmm. of the best people to put, like when you're spread thin on viable heroes, mm -hmm. the best person you can have is, is somebody who make clones. Just, like, like, yeah. yeah. So he's sitting there, maybe they only have two other, three other heroes actually there with him. But that's okay because he can make a thirty-man army anyway. Yeah, yeah. there has I, to I be think someone there to uh, like defend the system. Yeah, we wouldn't question as much if we had more of like those <laughs> AFO spies actively like attacking or, or yeah. more than what we did. But that's literally it... the purpose is to stay there because of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just somebody around to put people in a pack. What's that little baby? Here. Now Vlad King, what he's doing, we don't we don't ask those. Yes. We don't ask. Vlad has been a bum. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, she, he Vlad got his just... check and is just chilling. Like guys, we 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 kind of we low key lost the war. I'm, I'm gonna just go to Malaysia. No, right. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. not. We can't have that kind of person around the area. Mm -hmm. Air. I, can't, I still can't believe your Roy Musha came out of the first war alive. Got to retire and everything. No one did anything to him. He got to sit back. I still what? wish that, like, Stain would have ran into him before he yeah. got into yeah. all, like... I was gonna say, that was a theory, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Stain is fraudulent for that, Loki. Like, I mean, there's no proof that, 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 one that off There's no proof that, that that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, but I want to see it. No, <laughs> give me a random flashback. Give me a random yeah. flashback of them being like, oh my goodness, we lost Stain. He died, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, oh, look, it turns out before Stain went to visit All Might was gonna on say. the battlefield, he went and whooped the shit out of I'm Musha. Listen, yeah. this ain't this ain't One Piece. We ain't getting out of the SBS. Yeah. I wanted, as All For One was about to kill him, his life is flashing before his eyes, and all he thinks about is killing your Roy Musha, man. That was his <laughs> one favorite memory. I should have done kill that bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I got more respect for Crust than your Musha. Yeah. Crust did it, man. Also, shout out to the random viewer who uh, saw me on the MHA Reddit this past week 
in a discussion about the impact of Shibuya versus uh, the POW, mm-hmm. because I gave somebody a mathematical explanation on why the surface area of impact for Giganto Machia he- heavily dwarfs uh, the impact of the domain that uh, Shibuya yes. Sakuna yeah. used, because it is directly stated to have a 140 meter radius, no matter how much the anime like creates a spectacle it of it. it. And the flame yeah. arrow was used within the domain expansion, so they have like overlapping territories. So, uh, despite how big it looks, it's basically like the diameter of three football fields combined. And uh, Machia had a five meter, five kilometer radius of splash damage as he ran eighty kilometers. So there's just inherently no way that he did less damage than Sakuna just off that. Yeah, uh, I mean, shoot, man. I think a lot of people just hype the Sakuna thing just because, like you said, visuals. Yeah, it's just no, that, like, that... it's supposed to be a big moment for Sakuna yeah. in that episode. Was like, oh, all the destruction wars with Maki is like, yeah, this is just my everyday, man. Listen, I'll never forgive the anime for making Maharaga look even more impressive. Big everywhere opera. I go, yeah, big, <laughs> big, big Raga, the upstopper, the upstopper, Mickey Raga. <laughs> All the JDK fans being like, oh, Maharaga is more impressive than any of the Nomus or Makia. Let's hey, chill. If he adapted to the Japanese legal system, he would have been <laughs> number one, man. <laughs> cook, cook. Oh. Big Raga didn't have enough time in the series. He needed I mean, the Japanese fooled, law. Being fooled by sheer spectacle is kind of like the bread and butter of a lot of anime fans, you know? <laughs> so that's no, the entire bread and butter of the anime industry. They're like, anime scale, anime. perspective, the fact that we were given an exact amount of, doesn't matter. We're here to put I mean, on a show. This, this happened in MHJ too, like, um, yeah, when the, goes being rescued. Like, bro. in the manga, he's not able to launch himself that far, at least not yet. Right. So it's like, it's genuinely a problem for him to get away. In the show, he he clears he clears the top of several buildings, and Nakamura had to be held back from making him go into the stratosphere. <laughs> like they had to stop him from doing that, like scale scale to like skyscraper level. But like when you think about it logically, how the show portrays it, it's like why couldn't Bakugo just get away anyways? Why did why did he need Deku and the others to rescue him? But anyways. Yeah, no, they uh, they oversold that like no other. They did it that was... because of his popularity too, you know. Because uh, hmm. I remember like reading the manga and be like, okay, yeah, like you know, they just did like a a, a smooth little jump. They were like, people like Ida, people like Shoto, people like Bakugo. Fuck it, high tier sports festival eleven, heaven piercing ice wall into basically a reciprocal burst that isn't a reciprocal burst for Ida and Bakugo is going to launch himself into the sun. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that scene went unnecessarily hard for what it was like. I appreciate it. I enjoy it. I just also know that it's very inaccurate to what the plot is trying to portray at that time of the story. Like, end, end game Bakugo can do that. It, the, the Bakugo at that point, he's not capable of that. He's like, he simply can't do it. He, was, he just wasn't at that level. So. Also, if he had actually launched an explosion, actually, it's not even that he can't do that. It's that if he had launched an explosion that big, he actually would have blown everybody away. Because te- that's like that that explosion is technically on par with the one he used to clear away Uraraka's as like meteor shower. It's just if he would have pointed it downward like that, he also would have hit himself with it, and that's not something Bakugo would willingly do. So there's a whole lot wrong with it narratively, but just rule of cool, right? Yeah. Oh, swag, Kino. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, so I know I've come in at the middle of this, but I uh, wanted to say excellent chapter. Honestly, one, I, I think it's one of Horikoshi's best because yes. it, it's, it's not only analyzing Deku's impact on everybody, it's showing the difference between him and All Might, which is so integral to the story. And it's been discussed a lot, both in the series and by other characters. You know, yeah, you don't got to be like All Might. What I found so unique about this was that Kaminari even brings this up. It's like, this is the moment where everybody cheers on the main character and be like, you got to win, you got this. 
Kaminari is actually worried about him first and foremost. He doesn't really feel like that. He he sort of feels like that, wants him to win, but he's more concerned about Deku's safety. He might die. And I think that's, and he's he's worried about that. But it's like it's it's just this it's just the way of showing that Deku's changed things, because people saw All Might, not as a person, they saw him as like, an just a symbol. They god. saw him, yeah. They saw him as a god. They saw him as like, like when you're playing a card game and you suddenly get like a really cool card. It's like ah oh, man, he's gonna bail me out. Boom, I win instantly. Deku doesn't have that. Why? Because he's 16 years old. Yes. But also because he has made so many connections throughout this series. And that has continued spreading outwards. They bring attention to Achaka's connection to him this chapter. Right? And when you get the big spread of him, like, launching forward, tears in his eyes, the bits of Shigaraki's fingers flying past him, and you see the crowd shot, and that one guy, what that one person is muttering, you can do it. Beep. That is exactly the feeling that Ochako said the name Deku gave her. And they also bring up her speech during uh during the end of the Dark Hero arc. Where he's like, everybody has to come together as one. And Hawks is thinking about that too, is like, is that a gravity girl? And he, he has that realization that a lot of what they've been building towards is because of her, but also because of Deku connecting everybody. So what Deku has done is more important than just being seen as another symbol of peace. He's he's being seen as an individual person, somebody everybody wants to root for, not only to win, but to come out the other side and be safe. Because there was a lot of there was a lot of apathy in society. People didn't really people didn't really care about each other at the start of the series as much as they should have. Mm-hmm. But now they see Deku giving it his all, and they and they really care about him because they see they they see what he's struggling with, and that, that that's just such a powerful message for me, and like it infuses that typical shonen give me all your support moment with that bit of humanity and reality, that's, it's just, ah, oh, it's so good. It's so good. I do you liken this to a spirit bomb instead of, and I kind of agree, but at the same time, it's more like the spirit of a spirit bomb moment. Yeah. It's about the hopes and dreams coalescing, yes. But ultimately, this is kind of about Deku's will and how if we're honest that's the thing that has always made him the hero not just one for all not not the quirk but his dedication to saving it his will to fight for others because yeah, like are, I think quirks actually, are linked like, yeah quirks are linked to emotions because quirks are representative of a person's personality so Deku making one for all <laughs> like using it in overdrive is to show how strong his willpower is. Like this is the kid who will break his break his limbs and will still keep going. Like it's like it's nothing. He's fighting through the pain and he's like he's going nearly mad, but he'll do it all the same to get what he wants. And also I want to draw attention to the the last two pages when and I found this this part very interesting was that when Shigaraki recoils as Deku is about to land a punch on him, you get that little flashback panel of Kotaro saying to him, Tanko, stop. Because he's reminding himself of his own father. And that brings up the actual root memory that caused all this, which was all the suffering and abuse he's, he, he, he dealt with in that house. And, and so the think, overlay. Oh, oh, sorry. And the oh, and I just want to finish this. The overlay for that uh, Deku is when he's in his hero uniform, and I think that's the first day he's going to UA. Uh, it's the respective, the it's the respective official start for uh, them, hero and villain. Uh, 
Yeah, true, true. So we got a super chat there. Hold on, I I, I have to address this super chat. Uh, the super what? chat has come through. What? From somebody named Siati. Um, they said, "I swear to God, Thomas is one of the biggest frauds in church history." What? He is dripless, holeless, can't <laughs> read. What? He has a big tooth, five what? head, four head, a twink, a simp, SMH, SMH. SMH, 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 SMH. Anyways, Thomas is my favorite sh- simp. Show love to him with three what smiles. What the fuck? Oh my god, Coyote. <laughs> much, much love, Thomas. Much love. Personally, I wouldn't take that line down. I, I went to get a drink. I came back. I sat down. I was like, oh, this is this fire ass like conversation. And all I hear is this. That's crazy. <laughs> Do you have to do say that? Well, I was face. timing it. I thought you were about to come back. Man. Listen, twenty dollars. Yeah, I'm about to say it. Like, <laughs> sure, I ain't happy, but at least twenty dollars going to <laughs> going to. He, he wanted you to see that. <laughs> yeah, make sure you saw it. Yeah. Uh, Coyote and Thomas. Do you take each other to be each other's lovely wedding? No. Yeah, he's already in my DMs flirting with me. Every no. Time of course, I'm already <laughs> married to him. That's crazy. If anyone has a reason why these two should not be wed, speak now. Me? Me? <laughs> you don't, there's no answer from you, okay? You can lie all you want. All right, with that being said, I find our formally No, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> with a you do. That's not how the, that's not how the marriage system works. It is the American one. You're meant to the American one. I need one, one more person yeah. to back me up with a you do, and they will I be do. together. No, 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 I no. Do. Oh my god. I love how there's an MHA manga to discuss, and we're talking about this. I'm gonna drain you of all your money, Thomas. You better get ready for this. The no fan fiction is going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm kind of relieved that. Mm-hmm. What? Ari is not getting involved. Oh, yeah. of course not. Oh, for sure. Yeah, man. She was going to Oh, yeah. We, we, we talked about that before views. you got here. <laughs> Ari is... Okay, so Ari is sing, like my genuine favorite anti-trope character to ever exist because every single... Like, Koriko, she purposely writes situations where Ari's quirk can just fix the problem. He's like, yeah. boom, I set this up. She could fix it right now. And then he narratively goes out of his way since the time she has shown up to be like, nope, not happening. Ha ha. Mm-hmm. I've said this dozens of times on air. We knew Ari was never going to be that person for this series when he was like, damn, it's crazy how Night Eye is dying and Ari's right down the hallway. Mm-hmm. Anyway. He's dead. Like, plenty of manga could would have been like, Eri slowly walks to the room, all fevered up, sad. Uh, I just want to help. That guy can't die for me. Uh, and managed to save Nine Eye. The Hori was like, nah, he's dead. Like, here's another and thing. We're not that. gonna tell this little girl right away that he died saving her. All right. Anyway. And that's been the way she's been used the rest of the story. And she only knows she can fix something, but she doesn't get to. She only uses it one other time. And that's with Mario after months of training. That's like (laughs) six months of stored time she can use to rewind him. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, bringing back Mario was a pretty clutch play because, hey, he was keeping everybody alive during that Shigaraki fight. Like it was him and Bakugo. Without, I mean, without Mario, more people would have died. I mean, that shot had that shit handled, man. He is God. <laughs> I'm one of those people who are not against like a mangaka or an author like going out of their way to go to the like to say to the audience, no, what you're saying is absolutely incorrect, and here's why. Because like people were complaining about Ari showing up and having it just be a no, it's a confirmation Ari ain't going to do anything. That's Probably the best part about this chapter. Well, one of the best parts about this chapter. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't know. 
people people just want to toss a, a little child into the battlefield with no like with like it makes no sense for like airy to travel from ua or like where the citizens are to deku and shigaraki there's no way the so, battle would have been ended sometimes over. people don't care about the logistics i don't even care about airy's emotional arc to overhaul i want her to rewind him so we get pro hero over it's just that simple like People just want to see Aerie do something pivotal for no reason. Mm -hmm. Even though it doesn't call for grounds for it. I mean, this is the same fandom that just could not figure out why the battle between the main hero and the main villain was being staged for last. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Everybody like, go before 416. Aerie's going to go to where Deku is at DH Shigaraki. 416. Aerie, we are far away from Midoriya. Your powers are still still weak. You can't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, this is also the same fan base who still believes Prime All Might will come back. Oh, please bring Prime All Might. Oh my mm -hmm. god, I would love that. Oh, anything. Just and give me something fan. random mm -hmm. like that. Uh, no, I hate All Might. Actually, no, I I forgot. I like it when All Might suffers. That's my favorite thing in my hero history. This man is forgetting his own agendas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, it was another two agendas were clashing each other, man. I can't have yeah. one without the other. I had to get rid of one real quick. My thing is, is that I really just want them to confirm that Night Eye's appearance was actually canon and not just his imagination. Uh, where? When he forced Ghost, it was like, that was going to be it. Bakugo saved you. <laughs> You think he just like transcended that... through his quirk? Yeah, just just confirm that you can. Oh, I didn't watch this trailer yet. Let me watch this thirty second clip. Oh, oh the MHA. Oh, for, for season seven. Yeah, boy. Mm hmm. Let's see. Looks promising. Doesn't look perfect, but looks promising. I can't wait for the blue sky debates every day. That was my favorite yeah. pastime. Oh, it's gonna be so fun. No, 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 green ground, the green ground. That's the I, I love these debates, man. It brings me joy. Oh, green ground, it. yeah. You know we gonna get the green ground debates. <laughs> the, <laughs> the water's yeah, blue. Green, speaking Not of my green water. ground, people should probably touch it. Yeah. Why is the sky blue? Oh, 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 now it's cloudy. Why wasn't it cloudy sooner? Meanwhile, there's a newscast explaining the fucking formation of the clouds from the heat of the Todoroki family cooking mid-combat. Like, Blue skies killed my mom, okay? <laughs> no. Okay, okay, here's the thing. I agree. A lot of the art direction in the anime can be pretty subpar. It can look, it can look downright ugly at times. Okay. Damn. We have known this for a long time now. And on top of that, Damn. The blue sky is really not that. It's really not as egregious as people make it out to be. It's like, honestly, I think in some shots it looks very nice. And people complain about, like, oh, well, why is even the Shigaraki versus Starfight? Why is that in the blue sky? I'm like, bro, <laughs> they're, they're in the fucking sky. And on the volume cover, that star is featured on when her little fight happens. Guess what color the sky is? Pink. Pink, true. Ooh, that would be raw. They should do that. It's it it's would. it's deep gold, of course. No, of course it's fucking blue. Deep gold too. Oh my god. Because I'm not against I'm that. not against like MHA going for a more stylized like sky, kind of like JoJo's or um what's another I'm anime? I think the book has been doing that, honestly. Yeah. Like they had like a crimson sky when it was sunset and whatnot. It looked wrong. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I would yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be opposed to it. I think it would look cool, but it's like at the same time, like it, it, it's it's a problem made out to be more than what it is. And people people do this thing where they compare anime stills yeah. with manga stills. And I've mentioned this before. And they do this with the MHA so frequently. I'm like, dude, instead of posting a freaking side by side 
and it doesn't really that prove is- anything because that's one frame out of so many in an episode. Actually, post the clips movie. side by side. And that's was, too much. That's too much. By has too much information for them to to. No, they have that. to go out of their way to do that. They're not going to do that. They're not going to screen record or grab a, a clip off YouTube. That's that's too much work. Yeah, it's just I think a lot of people see the anime vicariously through those screen caps. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, you're missing like all. The bits of character acting, you're missing the actual bits of action. Sakuga. I think people look for those big plus ultra moments all the time in every single episode. I'm like, bro, what makes those plus ultra moments special is that they're rare. So- uh, I disagree with that one. I I think part of it is like really high level productions like jjk and demon slayer and stuff and so people like if they don't see something on that towards. level that's what mm-hmm. i'm getting towards is that people people want the constant demon slayer level and it's like well that's not what the production is you get something pretty decent yeah. if you want something next level you're simply not going to get that I think I'd just rather to be all consistent I'd rather something be consistently ass than Ass with random top tier out of moments. I don't know. It's just a thing. I prefer consistency, even if it's. I mean, the show is consistent, though. It's like, it's the thing. I'll take this over Uh, a Tokyo Revengers adaptation, to be honest. I take that over Seven Deadly. Yeah, I'm not going to the Seven Deadly Cases. Seven Deadly take out Brewers that. adaptations. Yeah. Seven Deadly. You know what's man. you know what's even funnier? The the Sea Crow series has it's more consistent than the actual. I saw series. a bit of that, and I'm like, you I'm know what? I'm, this, but man. It is you know depressing. Kind of, <laughs> you know what I'm kind of relieved by with MHA, like the past, I'd say year or so. A lot of a lot of meathead and cloud accounts on various social media sites, whether it's Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. They kind of they kind of have moved to the to the content forming over to JJK. So that leaves a lot of the repetitive takes about MHA. I'm not seeing as much of those anymore. <laughs> Jesus, chill on the JJK, man. And I think JJK as well gets a lot of unfair flack. Which is part for the course when you have um, when you have that many eyes on it, especially for a weekly series, like people are going to dwell on things more often than usual. But I always say this: I think every community, my hero community, especially like in JJK, I think each community has different types of people that some were meant to. Like a lot of my hero fans going into JJK are going into it expecting different things, and JJK fans going to my hero expecting different things. And it, it just comes down to a lot of people. I say whether your favorite manga dictates how you view a series is how I view it. So mm-hmm. I think it's always going to be, no matter what, there's always going to be unfair takes just because of subjectivity. Whether like, I, I, I think still... my hero fans, or not my hero, a lot of people who are like big action fights won't really like my hero that much because my hero is more emotional driven fights and more like, showing you how we got here then jjk is just like we're gonna mm-hmm. throw hands straight and not stop i mean J- jjk is pretty perfect for people who like uh anime who like fast pace and like yeah quick action i mean like you know like some people might think otherwise because i do kind of do kind of trash it sometimes it's like I-, I trash it more so because people act like it's flawless it's like i still like the series overall I, I like that mentality. I like the mentality of your series as well as I do that with Dragon Ball. I that's my fucking goat, man. Like yeah. I did that with my heroes. Like even when I, I mean, really love my hero, when you really love something, you just hype that shit up. And even if someone says something negative, who cares? It's my it, fucking goat series, you know? It's mm-hmm. yeah, it's fine to poke poke fun at things sometimes, you know. It's like you can't you can't take everything too seriously. Um yeah. The only and... real problem with the, these accounts is people do take it seriously, and then you're like, oh my god, we can't have a real conversation now. Yeah. Super chat, by the way. Quoting memes instead of having like an honest conversation Dude, about... The JJK I... memes are fucking... Oh, by the way, Anaki, oh, hold Anaki on. you need a voice. You need a voice for this. I think a unique one, too. <laughs> hold on. It's, it's kind of depressing. 
Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just read it. <laughs> Hold on, Genie. Oh, yeah. The choreography <laughs> here sucks. Just tickling each other. Oh, mom beats me harder. My JJK gives me better emotions. I want to feel the blood rush to my head. Like whenever I smack it against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was not expecting Randy Savage. It was a wrestling day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a good one, though. I thought, I, I thought it was. Randy Savage no, 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 it was. I just wasn't. I just yeah. did not expect that. I, I, I do want a space to talk about JJK once it ends. Um mm-hmm. Because I, I do have some things I want to go over with it, and I am planning to do a reread once we get confirmation of, oh, the climax, which means it's like ending yeah. five chapters. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that... So I, I, I do like JJK. Um, what makes me sad in regards to it is that I don't... I feel like the plot is a vehicle for fights instead of the fights being a vehicle for the plot. Mm-hmm. He he leans a into that. Times. He he starts leaning into that a little ways into Shibuya, Shibuya and he gradually does it over the course of Culling Game. And then once you get to like, I think the te- tipping point is the issue you and I have with yeah. late Culling Game, which is the Maki hyperbolic space time chamber shit. Yeah, and it's just like. Oh, he kind of he kind of just wants to draw up. Flat Which, you know what? It. Fuck it. You want to draw cool shit? I know Kubo likes to draw cool shit, even though I think Kubo has way better character story writing than people give him credit for. Oh, uh, people are starting to realize that more recently, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is great. But like, I understand. Like, if you get this platform and you just want to do cool shit, I don't blame you. Like. It's kind of the same thing with video games, right? Sometimes people just want to do some cool shit and have fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I play League, and there's some champions in that game that I'm like, why the fuck is this is this? But you know what? I know that the person who made it and some of the people who play it are just like, this is so fun to me. Fuck yeah. Yorick till I die. But some people really have fun with that. And it's like it's also like uh, Peter's anti-Venom suit in Spider-Man 2. Um, like, you can argue from a thematic standpoint that might be a little troubling, but as a but as somebody's playing the game, you still want access to those abilities. So yeah, yes. you yeah. need it in there. Oh like, yeah, I, like I thought I locked myself out out of the trophy for uh, like c- finishing the ability tree uh, because I got to that point where he got rid of the suit in the story. Yeah, you still get the. Yeah. To unlock them all and yeah. you know platinum it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it gives you because like typically at the end of these games, you kind of the game's like, yeah, you do whatever you want. It doesn't matter if that makes no sense for a next game. But with with like Spider-Man 2, it does make sense. But although it kind of loses the whole like it kind of I don't know how I feel about Peter still having a symbiote. Um or a anti-symbiote. Um, me personally, when it comes to JJK, just not to the spoil the part, but the time skip after that big, spe- like Ooh. significant, like oh, moment, yes. that's where Bro. I felt like, yeah, I JJK Bro, even me. even even JJK diehards, I I would saw were like saying to other people like, no, no, dude, don't cap for that. That was garbage. Mm-hmm. It is garbage. Oh, oh my God. I like. Like, for example, the best example I could give at MHA is before the final war. Like, that set of chapters makes what? me happy because I get to spend a bit more time with these characters before we leap into... Yeah. The way yeah. I describe JJK's time skip is like, imagine if after PLW ended, you zipped straight to Star Dying, and then mm-hmm. everybody just kind of appeared in front of all for one a couple chapters later. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to say that... I kind of feel, I kind of feel like Shibuya happened way too soon as well. It's like, um, like I, I use this I use this comparison with a couple of uh, uh, 
on YouTube comments for a couple of reaction videos. And it's like, like Shibuya happening as soon as it did in JJK story. It was like MHA going from the final exams to PLW. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know. It just depends because, like, like I said, JJK is a different story. And sure. from the perspective we have now, it was always meant to be short. So, coming from that perspective, I always viewed Shibuya as like it's supposed to be the big change arc of battle of which will survive curses or fucking like um Humanity. the sorcerers and it's supposed to take us into a new era which is what it ex exactly did it got rid of mojito got rid of gojo not gojo fucking get oh so and it was re it was really there just to get rid of like the old cast so we can get into a new era of where jjk was gonna go mm. so here's what i'll say though i think that I think the, the main difference for me between My Hero and JJK is that I think JJK lives by the rule of cool a bit more than My Hero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of a time where I was like, yeah, My Hero definitely threw that for the rule of cool. And maybe somebody else can. I can't. And I think that's one of the things that I've liked about the story is that there are times where I'm like, oh, this really raw thing could happen. But it doesn't happen, and the reason it doesn't happen is because that's just not what the characters involved yeah. are, yeah. and that's not what the situation calls for. So that's just not how it's going to go down. I People think the biggest argue... rule of cool in my hero is the star fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even that, was honestly, like... I think I think the uh, the second movie is probably the only time my hero has ever done a rule of cool with Bakugo using one for all. And like, that to this day is like one of the most controversial yeah. things because we like people can't deny it's canon anymore. Mm -hmm. like, I, I kept telling people movies are canon, movies are canon. He said they're canon. I was like, well, it it it, it it's not like it, it's not like they really referenced them. And then in in come the cavalcade of fucking character shots <laughs> in the last few oh, chapters. I, I get what they mean. Like the movies aren't really referenced that much besides movie one. But because like movie two, I see a lot of people say like, well, why wasn't uh, nine mentioned that much? Why wasn't nine's crew mentioned that much, especially since we're in a prison break? And mm. it just comes down to like, at the end of the day, they're just extra side arcs that you can pay to watch. Exactly. Look, I've said it once and I'll say it again for, OK, especially for a group of people who have, whether grown up or not have lived in the MCU universe, in the MCU universe zeitgeist era, to be this confused about verse canon is baffling. And don't get me wrong, the MCU has lost this charm yeah. in the past like five to six years where, you know, it used to be... Hey, do you guys want Pang fighting ants? Uh, yes. Do you guys... Course. Do you guys want to see Modok say he is not a dick? Except he's not really Modok. He's, he's Yellow Jacket. No, 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 that's not what I was saying. What I was saying, what I was saying, yeah. that was like, if you watched the Iron Man trilogy, you didn't really care what happened in any other MCU film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The same for like the first two Thors, the first two Captain Americas. You could kind of get away with just focusing on those stories as their own things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go into the galaxy. Like the first two yeah. movies is it's so and they aren't heavily referential. They're not like, hey, wink wink. We know remember like yeah, yeah. You can have your own like oh but, I don't know anything about the MCU, but I do like these like this cover of this DVD looks really cool. Let's put it on. So it found the same trap as the comics then, where like in order yeah. to understand one thing, you need to ha have encyclopedic knowledge about six others. Honestly, mm -hmm. dude, like I've seen comic fans try to deny how intimidating comics are to get into. It's like it's not that hard. You got you just got to pick and read. I'm like, dude, it is know. very very hard. It is, like, dude. People care about being in the know on everything, like. If you just throw a bunch of references to other events at them, people are going to be like, "What? what's that? I feel like I'm missing out. That's where the intimidation factor comes in. And I've seen so many comics accounts try and deny this. It's like, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. It's like, dude, it is hard. 
like I you gotta you gotta give it up. I get that you're a fan, but you gotta give it so up. So Marvel to Marvel's like best live action product, which is Daredevil, falls into this similar trap where if you wanna watch the entire series, you can, but you gotta watch the fenders when you go into season three because then you were kind of yeah. confused with, with mass. And it's like what wait, why did Matt fall out of like yeah. a, a, a like a, a tube? Like what's going on there? Like why is he so down on himself? Like, what's going on here? Like, you have to watch The Defenders. And to anyone who doesn't know that they have to watch The Defenders, they're missing out on Das. And that's the problem with the MCU. And soon, most likely, the DCU, which I'm I'm excited for that because I'm a Superman's my favorite superhero in comics. And I'm just really excited for James Gunn because James Gunn has put out the best superhero you know, media in the past do, few years. If they do Kingdom Come for DCU instead of like this the typical uh dark side shit i'm going to be very happy actually and there's i think that's a more unique direction mm. than what we've seen because like there's more to there's more to superhero comics than just fucking the big alien bad guy yes i i am really excited cuz like one thing these movies lose like track of is these superheroes are heroes they are people they they are meant to save the day for just the little guy. That's why people love Spider Man. That's why people love um, Superman in comics. I want to point out since you're on, they're meant they're meant to be real people, and it's also supposed to be like a lot of directors, especially Snyder, don't realize that they're supposed to be like make believe and not almost like true to the one to one. Like him saying Batman is supposed to be able to kill is insanity oh don't get me he he came out with the the i think he was on joe rogan and yeah. he was like oh you're telling me i can't have batman use a gun and yeah. kill well i want to do it more your child it, it's like sometimes you gotta understand these aren't meant to be like i get you want to make a situation where he's supposed to kill but that batman's whole thing is he's not supposed to kill and when he's put into a situation where he is Somehow he finds a way not to. That's literally Batman's whole thing. That that Snyder interview made me cringe. So I hard. I've never felt so like happy that a director and a really like a creative like visioner ha, is ha, no longer in charge of a, an IP. Like do, do 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 you do you guys know what his plan for uh, Justice League was going to be? Oh, was it a uh, Lois and um, yeah, yeah. Was raising Batman. Batman's son? <laughs> like, oh, come on. Damn. No, it yeah, because like Superman leaves and then Batman and Lois hit, uh hooks he up. Wanted the cuck Superman arc. <laughs> makes me mad. He like I I love him as like a direct. I think he can make gorgeous movies, but as a <laughs> as someone in charge of he, like he, a let him keep doing extent, his nah. in, yeah, let him keep doing his individual things that are entirely his mm-hmm. own. Keep them away from a lot of the shared IP stuff. Yes. In general, I think people should not really go into a AIP wanting to change everything. Because then it's like, why are you even directing or like doing that movie if you mm-hmm. aren't really interested in what it makes it what makes it? it? Yeah. And instead of you're sure. just trying to make your own version of it. It's always great to challenge these characters and put them into situations that they yeah. have not been in. However, you shouldn't sacrifice what makes yeah. the character special there, because we all know batman between... has shot people before in the past yeah. but he, we know why he doesn't do that anymore and it made batman a much more interesting character his holier than Dao, uh, like behavior gets challenged a lot and that's interesting you can adapt that into um into the new movies and people would love it but no, you are just like, oh, guns are so cool. And what if Batman killed? No, that's not interesting. That is boring. That's why most people don't like Batman. Yeah. I think it's already been said, like, Batman not killing is what makes him unique compared to most heroes. Like, mm-hmm. we're in an era, especially now, where in the movies, pretty much every hero kills at this point. So it's yes. like him not killing and finding ways around killing and arresting people is more interesting to watch visually than oh batman just brutally beats this guy's head off for no mm-hmm. fucking reason like i'm gonna be honest man of steel is one of my least favorite movies just because it <laughs> offended me but honestly it's a great dragon ball movie oh yeah man. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> like the visuals are cool. That's what you should be doing for that. But like my, my tickets to Man of Steel were free, and I still felt like I wasted my money. Mm -hmm. Yo, Tom, I don't like how it. Lil we he should smiles. get Dragon Ball Evolution 2.0, man. <laughs> I I want it into existence now. Listen, I I think we should wait a few more years for that after what happened, and really? also the Avatar Everybody. live action really made me so mad. I don't want to see another live adaptation. Do you hear of, they're getting uh product. three seasons? For what? Oh yeah, I I know that we're getting uh Booker. Yes, it was it was already uh, renewed for seasons two and three. Mm -hmm. But listen, I'm all for like sure the the first season was dog. But hey, maybe oh. they can improve. And like, then speaking on Avatar, non like a uh, live action. Apparently, we're gonna get a new Avatar series with yes, the, the following the brand new Avatar man. That yeah, I, I can't for wait that. for it because people were already shitting on Korra. I want to see what they say to this Avatar man. I oh, like Avatar is a girl. Earth Avatar. If this Avatar is a girl. They're probably gonna find whatever reason they can to shit on her. Yes, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was about to say. That is exactly what I was about to say. It's the it's I, the Earth it's the Earth Avatar this time. Yes. So oh my even... god, they're gonna bring Earth bending back. Finally, make them OP, yeah. please. And honestly, I... dude, if you do an Earth bending Avatar, you kind of have to complete the the cycle and do a fire bending Avatar. Oh please, yes. fire Avatar. Please. We're they, 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 a fire. But you know what I want then? I don't need to go <laughs> further for it because we'd be going into like extra future future shit. Yes. Yeah. Give me a fire bending Avatar. Okay, so we, I don't mind doing a, a steampunk future or cyberpunk future with yeah. the Avatar, but. Go all the way back to the beginning. Give me an Avatar Wan story. Mm. I got enough from Wan, but he so, make a... so the only reason why I say no to that is that we essentially got to see the beginning of his journey and the end of his journey. It would have to be novels for Wan. Um because yeah. oh. we get the, we know that like he did like want an era of peace, but he failed. Um and then obviously the next avatar got reborn after he admitted it to uh to Rava. So I would love Wan comics, but I don't think an anime series. I think they're gonna eventually just do like just fuck it. We're just going further and further into the future with each avatar. Well, Unless they're avatar, movies. The next avatar is gonna die at like 15. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to go that far in the future. I can tell many series of people like Kiyoshi and Yang Chen and whatnot. I almost thought about like, what about a Roku season or whatever? But like, I think we've seen the most interesting yes. parts of Roku's life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm currently reading the comics again, and they're so they're good. But um, an interesting moment with Wan, uh, not Wan, uh, Roku, is Roku and Ang are talking, and Roku admits that he does regret not killing Sozin. Um. Like, if we had to get a Roku kind of spinoff, I would like to explore his feelings a bit more, like, more of their relationship than yeah. what we got. Um, that would be that'd be cool. Um, I'm just really excited for the Earth Avatar. And see I, why I he want the Earth Avatar to have stronger villains than Korra. I don't know how they're going to do it, man. But the amount of ass whoopings Korra got for having over-the-top villains like Amon, who can bloodbend by looking at you, is insanity. Mm. Give this avatar new ass whoopings I have never seen, man. Dude, you're I gonna have them. gun benders. What are you saying? Yeah, exactly. Give them the first gun bender. Show them how it is. Yeah. <laughs> metal bend. I, I mean, yeah. What is metal bend bullets? Exactly. So, yeah, I was. I was gonna say, would would Toph's metal bend in be able to be done with yes bullets or? It, it's until Bo Lin starts teaching ability. people how to lob a bit because he didn't think yeah. that shit through. In the in the comics in the promise, um, how Toph uh, like trains her first few students is uh, with uh, Sokka as well. They get like little coins and they just fling the coins. So bullets ah! are hundred percent like yes, <laughs> like can be used. Um, I don't know if the Earthbending Avatar would be happy with that. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that'd be a nice kind of because like. Kind of like Korra had a bit of propaganda, so I would like them to kind of just go all in on that and show that yeah, these are this is a fucking bad idea. Like stop. Overall, I just hate that type of propaganda in media. I kind of like want them to deconstruct that. Mm -hmm. Well, I know. Actually, Monica, um, I actually wanted to ask you this. They were having a whole Avatar debate on a Twitter like a week ago. Who is the weakest nation 
in your opinion? Like currently, like at the end of four, or like at the not bending, but the nation. Just yeah, the nation, general. not the bending. So, because we can have a whole different discussion on bending. It's water. Water is not the weakest. Shut the fuck. It is the weakest nation. If we're oh, nation! Running, I like, thought you said bending. Not bending. No, no. nation. So, nation. Yeah. It's genuinely either Earth or water, and both are arguable for different reasons. The Earth nation has the highest population of non-benders. <laughs> Which just inherently makes you more susceptible mm-hmm. to getting your ass whooped mm-hmm. by a well-trained bending army. Maybe less so now with the more modernized approach to their weaponry and whatnot. But you could also apply it to the water nation due to the fact that while they have they seem to have a higher surplus of benders, their military weaponry and like general technology levels seems a bit lower. Mm-hmm. So like both have technological issues, and then like you go, oh, well, what about the air nomads? They're, bro, they show up in ghillie suits and whoop your ass. Like I don't know what to tell you. They, yeah. they're like running around fighting people at all times. Like, I mean, I, so was the they specifically chose out? them. You no, know, they like they specifically went after them first because they were a threat. <laughs> like you don't mess with air nomads. They are because I feel like saying air nations kind of cheap because like yeah, they were wiped out and. Was yeah, the only yeah. wiped out That's when why the Fire Nation had That's stat it, boost, man. I think the True. Fire Nation was obviously the strongest nation. Um, Once they took they out the Fire, Nation, just gave them better access to military development. Mm-hmm. They could, yeah. you know, forge stuff more easily. Yes. Now, here, here's a question, because like I really haven't paid any attention to the series in a long, long time. Um, mm-hmm. Does, like, does a specific nation only give rise to benders of that nation's element? Like, could someone with the ability to bend fire be born in the water tribe? If, if, the, uh, if, if a fire bender moved there. And, yeah, if Fire Nation oh. was clocking cheeks in that nation. There was, yeah. a, there was a, a, a location called Yudao, and oh, so there was a character it's... called Cory, okay. and she was a earthbender in a fire nation colony in the earthbending, like, nation i believe so i would guess yeah that could happen we just haven't seen it i'm pretty sure i don't know i need to go back dude i actually i just realized what i want from the new series i want to see if it's possible to get a hybrid bender out of this shit i I don't know what benders are yeah yeah yeah, that's what i was gonna say i was gonna say like water and fire type shit Actually, yeah, because Bolin's parents, yeah, they're an earthbender and a firebender. Yeah. And to me, that's so that's what to me lava benders are. That's what uh, sand benders to me are like, like wind, air, and earth. Yeah, air, yeah, because they're yeah. nomads, so they clearly have like part of that culture infused with them. So yeah, like to me, once benders start fucking on other benders, you get some more interesting stuff, just like. And Yang Chen, I guess Yang Chen's novel show that the combustion benders are partially yes. experiments, but even that seems like a combination of uh, air nomads and fire nation people. Oh, my little baby sleepy. Little sleepy girl. I am, um, yeah, because in Korra, it like, it straight up confirmed that there were like air nomads who like obviously died, but they had family members throughout the world. That would be interesting to explore more of that. Air Nomad straight got hoed, man. All we have is Aang and... It's still the best bending shit. style, but, you know, that's just me. Hey, man, I take water bending over air bending any fucking day. The water, I think the water, the air water, like... I, I kind of feel like the water bender should have been the, like, the oppressive army just because people's bodies are over 90% they water. They should have been, but they're <laughs> sexist as fuck, man. They mm-hmm. were held back on that old time shit, so they just took the L for no reason. But not just that, you have like the the south the southern nation of water, like they only have one. It was Katara after Yeah, yeah. Katara was the at, like Katara was the only hitter for the water nation out of like hundreds of other people. Come on, man. You can't like Katara outdo you like that, bro. And that is true. The Northern War Tribe were purposely not teaching women how to fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, in a world where you have, like, magical powers, I just don't understand 
like from a military perspective, not having everybody be as juiced as possible. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm supposed to be a battle dude, why the fuck would I not sit here and learn how to heal minor injuries at minimum? Yep. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm trying to whoop more people's asses and be less likely to get my ass whooped. And if I do take damage, I want to be able to fix it. Why would I be sitting here just like, well, I make water whips and shoot icicles, but I'll be damned if I learn how to heal my own wounds. That's a woman's job. Bro, if I got burned, here. if I got burned, water, water will come in handy. Like, I'm a War and Nation Army member. I can I can whoop some ass. Gee, man, the fact that the Water Nation got trumped on their home turf is insanity, man. You're going to let the Fire Nation just whop you out of water, bro? I can't fucking believe it, man. Bro. I'm just going to... It's because they didn't have, like, super sophisticated houses, though. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you had better infrastructure then you can better defend it and go all out. But they were going to have to throw their houses at people to, in order to win. Sometimes so, you just got to do that. <laughs> you, your neighbor pissed you off that day. It was perfect time for war, man. Throw that, his is house. Very, that is very clever. I smoked that fire. He would earth bend and just make YouTube videos of making huts and pools in the jungle. Earth bending mm. would be useful, but I feel like oh. a lot of people would just mess shit up that I'd get annoyed. Also, I want to... Cementos is basically uh, an earthbender. Yeah. What Cameron Bailey brought up, which is, yeah, that Magneto shit was crazy because saying Magneto is Hitler is... Oh, yeah. One hey, of the huh? craziest oversimplifications of a character I've ever seen. Wait, what happened? There was this thing that went viral because, like, this right-wing dude was like, Magneto is Hitler. He's literally Hitler, what? guys. Like, and it's like, no. And then they, they posted this thing of Red Skull where Red Skull was like, you did what it takes to have your... And it's like, bro, if you look at the whole page, Red Skull was basically like, damn, I'm scared for my life. Let me say some shit to get in his head. So I'm like, how did you... How did you? And he's like, well, it could be true, even if he's a villain. It's like, no, you want that to be true, because you want the idea of the oppressed lashing out and fighting to get dominance so they don't have to deal with you to be the same as just going out of your way to oppress people. And it isn't. So... And the only reason, and the main reason why Magneto ends up doing bad things after he gets his mutant states is because then he's just, then he's not a villain. Then he's just a dude who got what he needed for his people. So it's more like the the return to status quo issue that you find in a lot of stories. And even then, when he was rolling around with Scott Summers, I guess we were supposed to see them as a villain, but they were, they were right. I was it's interesting. Them. Because the X Men are the group of like heroes who always gets like the, the most amount of just shit talking when it comes to their fan base. Like no one knows how to talk about X Men. It's either they're very very like shitty when describing them, or they just don't. They just don't know how to read. Like the amount of people when they announced the um the revival of the X Men series. Who are like, oh, they're woke of fire in the X Men. Well, I got some bad see. news to tell you about the X Men. Yeah, they, people don't understand. And it's it's usually the same people. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost always the same people that the X Men aren't magically being woke It's that you have never once paid attention to political yes. intrigue or subtext in anything you've consumed. And now that other people have pointed this stuff out to you, you're uncomfortable with the thoughts or the positions you've taken in some of these stories or how simple you originally processed them as. And instead of altering your perspective and seeing like a new way to look at the story and understanding it better, you're just going to claim that it's different and never think about what the hell you were seeing in the first place. Yeah, I mean, that, to, the, to to that tweet that you made, I did reply that like even people who don't like the movie, they the standout seems to be Magneto's "I've been marked before" mm-hmm. when he when he showed the uh the hol the uh Holocaust tattoo. Yep, like it's all there for you, but you know it's it's not what people want to see. It's not what they want to be true. So. It's ignored. That's really all there is. It's just a Baku deck, a romantic pose. 
What the fuck did that? Where did that come from? Oh, Wait, I'll like a you tweet about that. Oh, I did uh drop one k on somebody who was saying <laughs> that the uh Bakugo holding or Bakugo getting helped by Deku. Oh, that cover. one. I think I saw that. Let me let me see if because I was like because I was like, bro, I'm gonna be real with you. If uh in this picture I don't see something romantic, I think damn this dude just got a hole blown in his chest and this person's kind of mad about it. Uh oh, that. Mm. Oh, I see. I see it. Yeah, I. <laughs> that was bro, great. People wanted it to be a whole bunch. Like, nah, bro. What was funny is just that. Which, is that the fine cover? Yeah, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to oh, okay. say this in a nice way because I don't want it to come off the wrong way. But a person who stated they were a romantic, which means it's like you don't have like a powerful lens to view romance from, according to yourself, in your personal life, was mad that I was like, no, like this is about tragedy, not romance. That's not what this trope is even for. It's just that. Because, like, it isn't. Like, the, the corpse holding pose isn't for that. And then, like, people were posting examples of Spider-Man holding Gwen Stacy, and I'm like, I need you to look at the way these characters are being held and understand that he's practically cuddling her like they're about to go to sleep together versus literally just holding the dead body. Like, But also understand that there are movies where parents hold their kids like that there are movies where people hold their dogs like that like that pose is not reserved for romance it is specifically for tragedy and is sometimes layered with romance and the other thing that i'm going to say is that a lot of people try to apply romance genre tropes to an action series and that is a fundamentally flawed way to approach the media you're consuming like if i like there are things that happen in horror films that like if you see somebody split up in a horror movie right like watching a horror movie they're like let's split up you're like oh shit who's about to die (laughs) if you're watching a superhero film and people are like all right we need to split up you're like okay like they gotta do multiple angles there everybody's about to get their mission do their jobs yeah like you fundamentally let's split up gang means two different things in a horror genre and in the action genre and let's split up means that it is an especially different thing in the romance genre so like <laughs> trying to apply tropes from other genres to other genres to make your point is inherently disingenuous yeah like it just is it's just like a fundamental disconnect and I get it if you want that to be the case, you know, you want to enjoy your stuff, but like you have to understand that you are not operating in good faith if you are like, well, this happens in like in a, in a lot of comedies, if somebody gets hit in the face, it's just funny. So this series, like Bakugo exploding Deku was strictly funny. And it's like, well, you can take it as a joke, but he's also like, they, they make it a point to say like, no, he's being a dick, like that's not cool. Like it's not something that just gets glazed over. People want to understand why Baki is so aggressive, and it's something that they work out of their relationship. So clearly, it wasn't supposed to just be a comedic trope. So there's just these weird things. And, and media analysis is nuanced, and yeah, I think people tend to, and this is why I don't, I can't support death of the author to the degree that many people want to. Yeah. And it's because so often people take go like way too far where it's like this is very obviously not what's supposed to be the thing, but because you like this idea, you're purposely twisting certain stuff. And the whole like all media interpretations is valid. It just isn't true. I'm sorry, it's not true. Uh, you can be wrong. Like there's something like you can't be like, oh, this is 100 percent true for some of these, but there's definitely some shit that's just 100 percent wrong. And that's just how yeah. it works. Like, it also comes down to if you go into something looking for something in a certain lens, you will most likely twist any view to fit how it is supposed to look in your eyes. Like for example, like let's use Avatar. People can have different lenses on Azula, and that is very prevalent. Like some people think that she was not a monster and all this other stuff about her childhood. Some people do, and depending on how you 
view something in different lens, you'll make everything fit into how you want it for your argument to work in reality. Oh, Uncle well, Iroh was always mean to her, always a monster to her, never liked her. And you'll fit that to your thing. In. So it's like... You know, you know what the biggest example of Avatar, of that in Avatar actually is? Yeah. What? Another ship. Fucking Zutara. Yeah, exactly. And the, like, because they always say, Katang doesn't make any sense. They, they don't... And it's like, she, she was a mother to him strictly the entire series. And it's like, no, they... At, like... Avatar Aang came out the glacier like, hold up. I like what I see. She kind of bad though. Like he woke up on Katara time, like, hey yo, yeah. the world right here. And then you like, had the the shit with the when they get to the fortune teller in season one, and she's told yeah. she's gonna marry a powerful bender, and she watches that stuff happen, and you have like the cave of lovers. And yeah, fucking the the dance scene during Book Three Fire. Oh, that was so because it's like where he's like, they're they're gonna go to where Ang hosts the dance party or whatever. He's like, it's just you and me, girl. And she's like, oh, <laughs> like, bro, they were macking on each other randomly the whole series. Yeah. You it it like comes Zuko down to more. exactly. I was literally about to say, people just like Zuko more than Aang, and that's how it is sometimes. Even with Baku Deku, they like Bakugo more than Uraraka. So Wait, that, what I come that makes more, we're talking about like how shipping and all this other stuff comes into and all this like stuff. bad faith media interpretation. Yeah, bad faith, different interpretation. Mm. Yeah, it's like yeah, they just like, and that's the same for me for Zutar. I am a Zutar fan. Or, and that just comes down to I like Zuko more than Aang. And oh. I like Katara at the same time. So to me, it makes sense to put my two favorite characters together. Hmm. If especially if they kinda interacted. Hmm. But that it, that's how they also do it with like Avatar and not Avatar, uh fucking Bakugo and Deku is they like Deku, they like Bakugo. They are with each other almost all the time. It's time to match them together. That's how it uh, is. Uh, well. Objectivity. I think with Baku Deku, a lot of it is kind of shadow, just liking Bakugo and seeing Deku as a consolation prize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely people in that in that shipping part, like that, like the whole Baku Deku community who do view it that way. Like the I don't like Deku, but I like Baku. And I want to have it into like this type of like they shipped. I, you know, I, 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 I Deku's don't wanna... just there to be like the husband, while Bakugo yeah. gets like. His relationship. Which yeah, is I mean, I, I, I don't want to paint with. Fantasies. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but I think a lot of the loudest ones definitely have that viewpoint. Um, you kind of see it in the way they talk about certain things too. It's like, even up until this final fight with Shigaraki, people were speculating, "Oh, Bakugo's gonna fall after him and help." I'm like, bro, no. Bakugo just beat all for one, and Deku and Shigaraki are like on the other side of the country now. <laughs> I mean, it's just mm. all about hyping your favorite characters, man. I go like passed out after that too. Oh. I do it to my characters as well sometimes, man. Because I, Look. I don't think like a lot of I think a lot of people need to realize, and it's an easier way to like stomach the whole like Baku Deku like shipping uh, discourse. I think Coyote like brushed up on it a bit. It's like we all get into the series for different reasons. A lot of these yeah. people are in there for the romance, and that's solely it. So all they want to talk about is the romance. And sometimes that can get frustrating. Sometimes you look at them and go, but do you really care about these characters? Or is it just for the sake of, oh, I want to see these characters together and yeah. nothing else? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a side effect of... I mean, let, let's let's be entirely blunt and honest here. A lot of MHA's popularity in the West online is from Tumblr. <laughs> uh, and that's why, yeah. Unfortunately. Like, I think that, it, like, if you're that's in fine. my hero fine. for, like, it's the just... shipping stuff, I think that's completely valid. If you're just there to see two characters get to there, that's fucking fine. I was in for Baki, just for Retsu and Pickle. I was happy with my life. I was in Attack on Titan just for Reiner. I was fucking happy. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think it's I think it's fine to be into it for, yeah. for just that. But at, at, at the same time, 
Like if you you, you can't extend that to the entire series, like you got to recognize it stops somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people just kind of try to stretch characters well past what their roles are. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what oh no, weirdest... this is absolutely the way it was meant to be seen. It's like, was it though? <laughs> One of the weirdest interactions I had in, the, in that conversation was that where somebody was like, Deku's form of love is for two hearts to become one, and but when I'm like, bro, what? This is pure headcanon. Yeah, you just made that up. <laughs> yeah, man. De- Deku hasn't had a date with anybody. Like the only time he thinks about dating is when Toga brings it up, and it kind of reveals that he's thinking about taking Ochako out on a date after. <laughs> Like, that's really like, it. This man said, somebody you get crepes with and hold hands at the amusement park while riding a Ferris wheel. Like, Platonic. <laughs> yeah. Like the super, the super basic idealistic type of date everybody has. Hey, man, Deku got fancy dates, man. I mean, I bought my wife crepes the other True. day. True. So. True. I mean, it, I, I'm, I'm, it's kind of you a similar. more than me, Anaki. Yeah, I'm playing I'm playing FF7 Rebirth right now, and it's kind of a similar thing with that, although I will say the romance is at least on both Tifa's and Eris' side, it's a very strong part of the plot. Mm. At the same time, that's all people talk about. It's like, bro, <laughs> there's more than that. Like any clip I'm I see getting... from that game is like Eris trying to flirt with Cloud, and Cloud's like, yeah. Yeah, get away from me. Deep. Deep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. play, play Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth if you haven't already. Question on Final Fantasy. I've always had this. Do I need to play one, two, three, four, or can I just jump into any No, they're, final... they're all different continuity cool. universes. Mm-hmm. The only ones that have that are part of like the same storyline and world are the ones that are specifically spin-offs or sequels to individual entries. Like Final Fantasy 13 2 is the continuation of Final Fantasy 13 story, but it's very specific to that universe. Okay. Final yeah. Fantasy 7 Advent Children is the sequel to the events of the original game. And without going too much into it, the remake stuff also kind of picks up on some threads that previous entries had left behind. If you see like a specific number at slapped onto uh onto a Final Fantasy title, that means it's part of that specific oh. Actually I was curious, just like quick pull, just because I do plan to get into it at some point. So like Yeah man, I saw like 13, 14. Dude, like, uh, that's kind of too much for me. Alvis, you you keep pushing me to play Xenoblade three. Um, it's let me, you, let me tell you this: Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is triple A Xenoblade. Oh no! Yeah, I've seen it. It looks amazing. It's just that I think I should probably play the original Final Fantasy VII first. And would you say um, I should play like it, Crisis Core and stuff going into like the remakes? It it depends. I mean, if you want to, if you can, you can just jump right into it. But if you want. If you want a full idea of what's going on, you're gonna have to dive into some of the previous stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. I just want to know, like, if that's. I'd recommend the original game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I recommend it. I I have it downloaded. I'll try it out. It's it's so good, man. Like it shows its age for sure, but it was the game. It was the game that pressured Bioware to step it up. With their writing, with Baldur's Gate two, there was a there was a specific dev note on the project that was like, "Be better than Final Fantasy seven Those guys <laughs> set the bar. We got it. We got to we got to match that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, God, I love Baldur's Gate. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> well, there you go, Thomas. You have Final Fantasy seven to thank for that. I, I guess. guess so. And it's kind of funny because you know, I'm seeing some of a little bit of Bioware's influence on uh, FF7 Rebirth because you have a dialogue wheel 
And that was something that Mass Effect pioneered. Um, it was a very simple way of managing the dialogue tree. And there's a, the, the dialogue wheel ends in Rebirth. And even a lot of the quests are kind of like the same level of depth depth you would expect from a Mass Effect game. And it's like, it was kind of, it was kind of a cool way to bring that full circle. It's like Square affecting Bioware, Bioware, even if they've fallen on hard times recently, affecting uh, Square Enix. It was really cool. Hmm. Cool. Right. <laughs> I think we're toning down, so I want to go around the horn and get final thoughts while I got this child to sleep on me. Uh, so Can I go was... first? Um, yes. Because I have to head off soon. Um, this chapter is amazing. Um, Andrew said, I think on uh, Saturday, Deku learned Shadow Claw in the first battle. I just thought that was perfect. <laughs> um, also, looks like Deku's about the the dunk on people. So I gotta I gotta get to that edit. Put get the basketball, basketball in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But overall, I really love this chapter. Um, we've said a lot about it in this in the stream, so I'm not going to like re <laughs> to paraphrase what people are saying. But I love how how much Deku's character shines and how much Deku has influenced people. It's like one of my favorite parts about protagonists seeing their impact on the cast and Same. honestly, out of a lot of current shonen protagonists, Deku's one of the one of the few who who's doing it. Like Fuko. Um I appreciate I love, it. You know you know Bob. Yeah, exactly. I love how Hori basically went to you know, he basically came up and was like, yo, y'all keep talking about Ari like she's a Dragon Ball. Here's why I'm not going to bring her out into the battlefield. Like, we're not going to put Ari in the cannon and shoot her all the way towards Shigaraki. And then she rewinds Shigaraki oh. to Tenko. And then Deku becomes his, like, father figure, just like, chance of mind. No, we're not getting, we're not doing this route. Um, overall, I love this this manga. I love this chapter. One of the best of this arc. And I'm just really excited to see where we go with this. Uh, Deku Go, uh, 10 out of 10 chapter. Like the stream and stay safe, everyone. Oh, oh I, mean, I think I said a lot about what I thought about uh, just this current conflict. I think this whole final arc has been, I mean, with the breaks and weekly binge, it definitely makes me feel like at some point I do want to do a full reread. Um, but man, like there is like some some of this stuff has been very good. Like I love the connections with just Deku and Eri. Like it really makes me think like man, maybe I should do like a reread of Overhaul or something. Like shit, like this. I feel like that will make it all just coalesce and hit harder. But yeah, the Nagant stuff is really cool. Just tying all these people together in this chapter. Seeing, of course, people are starting to cheer for Deku again. They're starting to bring that hope in. Just like we saw All Might's influence across the world with the live stream. People all over were praying. That he would succeed, that he wouldn't die. We'll see what happens here. It's it's an exciting time to be reading MHA. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, I won't really say much on my hero, just for the sole fact that this isn't really the stuff I normally talk about and the stuff that appeals to me. I'm not really a person that needs to see all these moments and all stuff, but that doesn't mean I don't like it. I appreciate that this is in there for the people that do enjoy this. But I guess I'll just spend my time just saying R.I.P. Akira Toriyama. Uh, yes. He spent, without even knowing it, he built up a lot of my childhood, my friend's childhood, to the point, like, I remember in high school and even middle school, I spent most of my time just building stories, like uh, fan stories of what if our characters were in there, and we would just spend all day, every day, hours upon hours just doing that type of stuff. So Akira Toriyama brought a lot of joy into my life with this series, and it's just sad seeing him go, especially that he won't be able to see his uh, works like Daima and anything else he had planned to come into fruition, especially Sandland. That was supposed to get yeah. a movie, I think. And then I also wanted to say, like, I think it's important now that we realize that uh, we need to be more kinder to mangakas. Like, Toyotaro is now going to go through so much more pressure that people are going to start comparing him to Akira Toriyama. They're going to start doing a lot of other stuff that is going to really put more pressure on him. 
and in general we shouldn't really do so uh, this is just a message to make sure to treat every mangaka even if you don't really like some of the work just respect like we don't need to mm -hmm. put more negativity out there we don't know what these mangaka are going through and we don't know if they have some unnailing illnesses and that's all just treat these mangaka with respect love appreciate every moment they're here and appreciate the stories they give us as well Indeed. Inspirational. Joseph? All right. So, actually, I want to start with, like, a little Akira Toriyama thing, because, um, okay, so, like, my first exposure to Dragon Ball Z was before Toonami existed, when the Ocean dub aired, like, really early in the morning. Uh, and that was how I discovered uh, that series. And then, like, it got really popular when Toonami started. Um, and, like, for the past few years, like, in, in recent years, the joke that I would make is that, like, his uh, Toriyama's writing style was that Moon Knight random bullshit go meme. But <laughs> he <clears throat> he had a real talent to mix all the stuff that he made up on the fly seemed like it was thought out in advance. Like, the Android and yes. Cell stuff should not work as well as it does. Yes. Especially considering all the all the uh, twice changing the antagonist of that arc. Uh, yes. Because of editorial. <laughs> hey, hey, but they cooked Cell, oh my god, what a perfect, like, co like coalescing of everything the series had built up. That, that He could have been one of the best final end tags. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. That whole story should not work as well as it did because of how it was done on the fly, and like, and so like that's just something I always appreciate. Like, like it, it's just like I'm, you know, what I'm trying to say. I'm yeah. <laughs> um. But as for uh, the chapter, I really like this a lot. Um, I'm kind of glad that they, uh, Horikoshi just addressed that, no, for the final time, Eri is not the goddamn Dragon Balls. She's not going to magically make everything all better. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, and I'm just, just really excited to see what's coming next. Like I mentioned earlier, that this felt like a season premiere episode. Like compared, with, like combined with uh, the last, yeah, uh, with the last chapter, just because it's like, all right, so here we are now. Here we are again. This is where everyone's at. This is what they went through. Here's how we're how we are going forward, and it's just super exciting, and I just cannot wait for more. And uh, yeah, it's. Pretty much it. Hello? Uh, I believe I, that just leaves us with a vote. Sorry, yeah. my mic is muted because you started crying. Okay. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Um, so, a few things off the top. Uh, first and foremost, yes, rest, rest, in, rest in peace, Kira Toriyama. He was, um, I, I, I made this tweet and people were like, what that's overstating it. It's like, well, it's really not. He built half of modern pop culture. Like he really did. Yeah. And it's not just like in ways that are overt. It's like, oh well, Dragon Ball had a direct influence on other stuff. It's, well, no. Dr Dragon Ball had direct influence on a lot of manga, a lot of video games. He uh he helped inspire the look for Mario. He, um, Cloud from Final Fantasy, like he's he's basically based off Gohan, Teen Gohan. Uh, there's also it, it, it's just it's simply it's simply too much to really say in a single sitting. Like he 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 really he yeah. really influenced. A, a lot like half half of what we have today is just is just not the same without him it probably would be less exciting the man was ingenious um okay sure dragon ball uh writing could go up and down but it's like 
he he never treated it super seriously is the thing. He was always looking to have fun. He mm-hmm. didn't know what was going to happen in the next chapter when he drew it, but he just kept going because he was enjoying it. And it was that enjoyment that was so infectious and so inspiring too. Um, I'm probably going to read Dragon Ball pretty soon. I've only ever seen the show. I want to read the manga because I know it's a little different and also that Toriyama's intention with the Goku was initially not not that he was going to be like more or less the straight up hero that the, the anime portrays him as, but that he was going to be more of more of a morally great character, more in it just for the pleasure of fighting. Something more akin to what I think Luffy is for One Piece, where yes, he fights for good because it's the ra- it's the rational thing to do, but like he himself does not have super super defined morals but anyways second shout out polygon for their jjk nuance treatment of women article which three oh, years no. later still provides a good laugh <laughs> oh, yeah, i mean i made a little video with that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and third really excellent chapter i do believe this is one of horikoshi's best simply because it was touching on a lot of things that really built up Deku and made MHA makes MHA so appealing. Uh, seeing their belief in him, and now we're gonna be going into we seem to be going right in, at, into the center of Sh- uh, Shigaraki's vestige world because if you look closely, Deku's black whip seems to be gone. So I'm wondering if he's punched them all through now, and he's actually made it there. So what happens to the quirks after that? This, I don't know. I think we're going to have to wait a few chapters. I think we're going to get some of this ment- uh, this mental stuff before we launch into proper phase three, whatever that is, and wrap things up. Um, I, It's been such a treat seeing this and... Uh, Seeing seeing Deku getting the respect he deserves, and like people are like, you can do it, and that's gonna build to a crescendo where everybody's cheering for him. That's gonna be so exciting to read. I I, I really can't wait. I just hope that there aren't too many more breaks so that I don't have to wait as long. We're already in the middle of March now. This Shigaraki fight literally started last in December. Oh yeah, it did nobody. Like this this part of it. And we're probably gonna go for a little while longer. Uh th- this series is one of a kind, man. I love Deku. I love Horikoshi's writing. Uh Hail Hori, as they say. <laughs> Hell yeah, Hail Hori. Thank you guys for everybody who came through. I appreciate you. We're going to go ahead and wrap the stream here. I'm excited about what we're getting next chapter. I did notice that he wasn't in Black Whip form, so I don't know if he launched all of them into him. I kind of hope not, but we'll see. Because if he launched it all into him and that was like kind of it, that kind of leads me into thinking he's going to get them back. Yeah. It's just Uh, too abrupt. Because uh, if we're going this far into Shigaraki Psyche, I feel like this is going to lead to a genuine vestige space interaction where the rules are going to get real shaky and turn into who wants what more, etc. So curious to see what's going to actually happen here. Because, I mean, we also just might not have a clean enough view. Like, he might not have been shadowed well. So we'll see what happens. But I do really look forward to seeing how this is resolved. And uh, when I hop off, Thank you guys. Thank you to Volt Coyote. Thank you to Joseph, Alvaz, and Thomas for coming through. Um, that's going to do it for us over here. We, we'll see you next week. Thank you for your time. Uh, we're out. Peace, yeah. peace. Laters. <laughs>